Hello folks, and welcome back, playing a little bit of Star Sector. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Where's that spot? Excuse me, folks. And to work on the washing machine, we will have to move the desk and the table. So you guys can just be prepared. How's your work going?
Oh, I'm sorry, love. What are you making to eat? I'm making you ramen and I'm ah. myself sweet potato on your things. Thank you very much.
Barely is. <laughs> I, I will just remember. I remember Adam uh, picking him up at seven o'clock in the morning. Him going, "God damn you, a hole! This is because of you. This is because of you. Next time, if I do anything like this, you say you gotta pay me at least fifty grand. At least fifty grand. <laughs> this is the words coming out of his mouth. Well, and well, you're a guest star. We, we did. Uh, yeah. I hate that when they say because we're gonna come get you in five minutes, and they do. Yeah. They literally like, five minutes. What? Yeah. And then we sat in the room for fourteen hours. <laughs> But yes, if you're doing one of those CSI Miami shows yeah. or whatever, that just becomes your life for as That's long it. as yeah. you're doing the show. It's like a move. It's like the grind of a movie schedule that you star in that never ends. The movie never ends. I could not imagine doing that. It's really tough. And to me, the toughest thing about it is like I'm totally, uh, you know, a perfectionist, you know, lunatic. And I like to like work things out. And like you know, in a movie, you get you know nine or eight, eight seven or eight takes. In this show, it's like two takes. They're moving on. They're moving. Wait a minute! I'm not done. You know, it would be really frustrating. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That's a crime. And that is true. I'm for character less. You can build character now. I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> Every North Carolina for a week with all those Dawson Creek. Yeah, it's great. Folks. Great. Could have just had a, a grand line of my beer. <laughs> Felt the same about myself and moved on. Aaron, yes. you're 30. Yes. What's up? Okay, we have a question about gay sex here in Tahunga. Who's we? Male gay sex. Who's we? My boyfriend and I. Okay. Uh, we've been watching a lot of queer folks. Call the experts. Yeah. <laughs> and some questions have come up. All right. So there's a gentleman on the top and a gentleman on the bottom. Let's say. Yeah, that's one way they do it. Okay. The gentleman who's on the bottom, who's receiving, right. does he get a, a catching? Erection? Excuse me. Let's just stop you right there. Catching. Right. Catching. Okay. Sorry. Does he get an erection? And does he have an orgasm from his penis, or is it all totally anal? I'm not sure if you have an anal orgasm. You don't have an orgasm. Yeah. We've been watching Queer as Boat since the second season came out. Mm -hmm. So we have to be thinking about these things. Sure. Okay. okay, thank you for your help. Yep. See, these TV these shows uh, warp uh, young 30 year old minds. <laughs> or educate. Or educate. See, which I think are the same. Yeah. What's the I kept looking at his, he had like 14 uh, bracelets on. You know, when guys are saying they're not gay and making clanking jewelry noises simultaneously, it's hard, it's hard to get around it. But if, if you're in, the, if you're a doggy, I don't think I could maintain a wretched if I was down in the doggy position for too long. Well, you, is it? Uh, I think I could, but for us, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of time. Bye. Douchebag, you can get harder. Yeah, the, the, it's the like the sound on the It's the douche bagalo that I think is the connection. Yeah, yeah. And the nozzle thing, yeah. and that's good. Well, you know what happens? It just it, it becomes it's a little thinner. It is. It is. I hate But you know what? No, it's all something we could catch on. Yeah. All right. And the one was here from the judge, you know, back when it was here. Here? Yeah. Okay, thanks for sparking that debate. You have a question for Rob? Yeah. So, um, you know, in honor of today's holiday, I'd like to give Rob's favorite hot story. Uh, for 420? Oh, Lord. Uh, hot story. Well, I did work with Tom Locke one time. <laughs> and uh, I was in Thailand, and I guess they grow things in Thailand. And uh, he said, I want you to die so I can check this out. And so, uh, anyway, uh, he was got it me funky high cold and I spent the weekend in a, uh, two days in a hotel room. I was that high. I couldn't leave. Whoa. I was just, uh, I'm not a, a big pot smoker. Were you uh, two days. smoking Thai stick or were you in Thailand smoking Thai stick? I was in Thailand smoking Thai stick. What were you doing in Thailand? There was some uh, movie. Not good. You and Tom Loke. You and a bad movie? Bro, no. I'm trying to think of what movie that was. Wild Thing. No. 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 That was Rob Thomas. Yeah, that was Rob Thomas. He's a great guy. He does seem like a good guy. He's a great guy. I had him on this show. Observe a, a kind guy, like, like yeah, really nice, sweet. yeah, sweet, really, guy. really good guy. Ooh, good. I'm sorry that's not a better uh, story for you, but for me that was, you know, a weekend in the hotel room. <laughs> I can't leave. Laura? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. What's the matter? Um, I was drinking last night, and I was to bring it to my parents. Who did this? I'm not sure. You, you don't know the person? Oh, I have a really quick question. We'll go ahead and put it on. What's the quick question? Um, okay, I called my friend tonight, and um, I thought she called me actually, and I was like, oh, can I call you back in an hour and a half? 
and the color back is just like, oh, I'm about to cut myself, like, so it was really the matter with her, and she's like, can I call you back? And I was like, no, and then I was like, can I call you back? She's like, no, and she's like, bye. And I'm really worried about her. It's been like an hour and a half, I don't know if I should call her. Okay, now let me tell you. So uh, let's let's go back to the rape. So who did this to you? Were you drunk? Were you at a party? What I was coming home from a school game. And somebody on the street just kind of grabbed you? Uh, it was in the woods actually. In the woods? What were you doing in the woods? In a little path, I think, to get to the natural quick. And did you completely freeze when this guy came upon you? Um, you know, I didn't even see him, he came upon me, and like, I screamed, but no one heard me, and I thought he, I mean, he just, you know, it was so quick, and like, I just went home towards, like, pretty much faint, and I got home, and my parents were there, they're coming back tomorrow. Why did you fight this guy off? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really small, I'm, uh, five seven actually, but... When did this happen? Friday. We're all Sunday. Why did you go to the emergency room and report this immediately? Because, um, I don't, I'm just afraid of what my parents are going to be like. Are, are you, have you been victimized before? What? And what how old were you? What happened? Eight. And what happened? Um, my uncle called off to me. Alright, so you've been, did that just happen on one occasion? Yeah. So that sort of... Well, no, it only happened for a few months. Right. So, so that sort of made you a good victim for this guy to pray upon. Yeah. Right. So, did you ever have any treatment for that? Did you tell anybody about that? Uh, well, I told my parents, I told them. About your uncle. What? You, you yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were just so upset that like I was scared of them. Like, did they did they not support you? In, uh, no, they supported me. I went to therapy for about a year. But they just scared you because obviously they were upset yeah. and they were freaked out. They were angry at the uncle, the brother. Yeah, but they were so crazy that like I, I'm just if they hear this again. Laura, why don't you contact the person that was your therapist back then? And oh, I was moved. Well, still contact that well, person for some help. Well, you need to go to uh, and get checked at the hospital. Yes. You need to, yeah, even though it's been a couple of days. How do I tell my parents? You know, um, well, you just, you, will, like, you don't have to. You don't have to. It's different in different states, but I have to well, check. Well, my parents are coming home tomorrow. Yeah, but you could go to the emergency room and get right free now. help right now. It's open 24 hours. Right. You need emergency contraception, right? How do I tell them that? You don't have to tell them. You can go get health care right now. You I need to get to checked. Them. Listen to me. Listen to us. You need to get checked. Go to the hospital right now. Okay. You know one near you. Yeah. Okay, you gotta go there right now. We need three things okay. they need to do. One is they need to give you some emergency contraception to make sure you don't get pregnant. Is that abortion? No, it's no, not an abortion pill. It just prevents, prevents any egg from being made available to whatever sperm's hanging out there waiting. But the sperm reaches the egg usually about th within three days. Whoa. You don't get pregnant the moment you have sex. It's usually about three days later. God. And if you can suppress the egg from being released, you don't get pregnant. So that's one of the things. You do that. And you got to check for STDs. And then treat your breast STDs and check your breast STDs. And then they need to collect some evidence just in case you ever want to do something. And you know what? And also, yeah, there's there's a chance this guy, if he's done this to you, he's going to do it again. So you need to contact the police. But listen. I'll have to tell our parents. Well, you don't have to. You can go get, you, you're, you are, um, well, you have a right to confidential health care right now. And you but, go get Laura. Yeah. Give you uh, a couple of things. First off, uh, I, I'm sorry for what happened to you, but you need to do this because this guy needs to be pursued, just like you wish somebody would have done it to him a year ago so that he wouldn't have victimized yeah. you. Okay. But uh, number two, did you get a look at him? Did you get a feel uh, for how old he was? No, I thought trauma at night and midnight. He didn't know if he was an old black man or a young white man. He couldn't you know, see or tell. He, um, I think he was white. How could you not know that? It was dark. It, it was these woods. I mean, was it all from behind it? Did you face down? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was, to, it, was for, it was for it was pitch black. Yeah, but if you had, if you were facing him at all, you would have seen at least his skin color. Yeah, I thought he was. He was definitely white. I think. White, well, yes. My black guys wear a lot of jewelry, yeah. and you can also tell you got Super Bowl rings and all well, stuff coming on. He was wearing a tank top. I know that. Tank top. Okay. Well, you know what? You probably. We'll find out more information. Will come to you over time. Now, yeah. you're probably still in a bit of shock right now. You need yeah, to go over the. You need to. I'm scared because I'm not. I mean, I almost feel like it didn't happen. Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> there's also denial and some guilt that blame being so part of Now you need to go to the hospital right now and get checked out, and it'll take it from there. But you need to do that for also for sexually transmitted diseases and, and the pregnancy right now, and take care of your health right now, and get over that that 
that guilt is and my yes, fault. And yes, you did nothing wrong, and you need to start getting used to taking charge yeah. and not being a victim. And uh, we're sorry, but please take care of it. And and we'll, go, you can go now until 25 hours a day. Right. That's right. We'll uh, take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline of Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Chris Titus is coming on the show tomorrow night. I like him because he's a car guy. Oh, yeah. So we'll talk to him about that, whatever else he's got coming up. Rob Schneider is our guest tonight. Thank you, man. That's huge. Nice to be here right now. Not plugging anything. Just hanging out. Have a good time. Between the whoring. We uh, <laughs> were, uh, left off with a uh, rather tragic call about Ray, but uh, we're going to rebound with a uh, uh, yeah question for Rob. Hello, Andrew. Andrew. You're 16? Yes, I am. What's up? How's, How's he? Awesome. Drew, I love you. Great. I do love you, too. Uh, Rob, I was wondering why you weren't in the uh, new Ash Taylor movie. That's a good question. I don't know. I was making a, a movie at the time. Another movie at the same time. I and, don't know. And is that an a Adam Sandler movie, or is it that one he's cast in? Uh, the, no, no, that's it. <laughs> Happy Madison developed it and uh, did the whole deal. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought... Uh, I thought no, but I wasn't in that. I wish I was. I, I'm in the new one, though. At the end, Greek Jimmy I said you can do it, and I was like, what the hell? Where's Rob Schneider? You can do it. <laughs> He's a good villain for me. Rudy. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was uh, honored. And it was the great Rudy Giuliani say that line. And also, the delivery guy wasn't there either. It just sucked, you know? Well, uh, next time I'll be in the next one. Thank you, though, for the support. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Junior? I didn't make a nickel without Rob. Yeah, I you know. I, I feel it's going to hurt the box office. It's, it's, it's <laughs> floundering. I mean, it only made $55 on. million last week. It's $3 million like, Monday. Probably down to like, uh, I was probably only made $85 million over the last uh, two weeks. Andrew? <laughs> yeah. Did you see it? Did you like it? Yeah, but uh, like, Rob makes those movies. Uh, well, thank you, Andrew. You're a good man. All right. You're a good guy. Thank you. Very good. Very kind of you. Good man. Take care, buddy. All right. All right. That's nice. That's I mean, nice. You have 16 year olds that aren't born again Christians out there, friends of mine. <laughs> Christine? Hi, Christine. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jane. Hey, yeah. Awesome. Good. What's up? Um, I was just basically wondering um, I have this friend. I mean, I've been friends for about like two years and stuff. Christine, how old are you? 21. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you're like 14. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, what happened? No, I'm really sorry. Okay, yeah. Then what happened? You have this friend. Okay, and um... I.e. not you. Huh? Go ahead. Okay, and recently I think I have a feeling that he likes me, but he's really like, you know, he's just showing feelings recently, and he hasn't really came out and told me that he does. And he's been just your friend. Yeah. And you get this vibe that he's getting more into it. Yeah, so I just basically wanted some advice on how I should go about it, like, confronting him about it. Do you like I him? Don't him? You know. You don't like him? So what, what do you want to do? What do you want? I want to I want to let him know that I don't like him. I don't want him to, like, uh, be looking back. How much of a friend is he? I'm a really good friend. Like, we hang out a lot. Uh, what has he done to let you know that he might like you? Like, we went, um, to school one time, and we watched, like, a game, and then, like, he'll put his arm around me and, like, do stuff like that, so... Have you thought about telling him pretending you're a lesbian? Uh, just to mix it up. Or just for me and Rob. They're good friends. He <laughs> would know that. Well, no, I, uh, you don't like the guy. Um, just start making out with somebody right from him. You, you have the two, you, you've been friends for two years, right? Mm -hmm. So you definitely, definitely can play the we're too good of friends card. <laughs> yeah. Which... No, that definitely would work. I, we, I, this friendship, I don't want to mess with. You're too valuable to me. Right. Which is kind of true. But now, but here's, here's the thing. Uh, okay, don't soft sell it too much. Yeah. You know, if he makes a move and then you shut him down, don't go, oh no, but you're great. Who knows? Yeah, do not one say, day no. in the future. Yeah, you do not leave the door open, Christine. Yeah, you you gotta not. shut it. You just gotta say it will never happen. I'm just too good of a friend. I can't do that way. You, yeah, right. I, I, well, I, I, you don't I, shut I, guys down really, really well. Good it, fart. No, that, no. no they kind of do yeah, yourself. No, yeah. yeah. You get that. Talking about other guys that you like. That, that gets them going. That gets them angry. But it would be like me with my little brother. Right. Oh, they look, then they're like, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. How do you get out of that? But it's just, like, we talk about, I talk about my guys, and he talks about his girls, but recently it's just basically like, you know, he'll give me his and stuff. Like, you don't yeah.
he puts his arm around you, and you can be like, come on, what are you doing? We're just friends. Honestly, like, I thought a woman would say to me, we're just friends, right? And, well, yeah, you know, I was working with somebody. It's like, of course, what are you talking about? And just, yeah. So you don't want to be that. Went, home, went back to his trailer and cried for three hours. No, first he went, <laughs> for, the, he went for the vengeance whack, then he cried, <laughs> then vengeance whack. You know? well, sometimes, like, it's in, the, it's in a woman's imagination, you know, all that, you know. Yeah. Like, Oh, I know. It's there's nothing worse than the conversation that starts going that way. Like, you know what I love about you, Rob? I love the fact that you know that we're just friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing I love about you is that well, it's really nothing because I'm not attracted to you. Uh, and then we start, and then you start back going, no, 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 no. Just because I'm crazily single, you're a beautiful, desirable. Yeah. What would make you think that I would have any interest? That you could be a good friend without me being attracted to you, and I just would never be, think of being attracted. Right. You, I find you sexually repulsive. It's also a good time, you know, one stopper. It's great doing the chicks amazingly dumb. Like, you're like, oh no, it's your, it's your 73 IQ and your ability <laughs> not to get any of my references or jokes. That's why I'm here, baby. Maybe. No. Austin. Yeah. You're 17? Yes, sir. How's it going, brother? It's going all right. Do you have a question for Rob? Yes, I do. I also have an answer to that anal orgasm. Mm -hmm. Thank God. You, you're, you're gay? No, I'm not. But uh, I, I work downtown at the uh, Performing Arts Center. We have a gay stage manager that explains things to me. Well, there you go. Could he explain things and show you things all summer? No. no Demonstrate? Okay. All right. And yeah, what did he tell you about the anal uh, sex? What did he say? Over our smoke break, uh, he was telling me, asked him what the butt plug was used for. And basically he said that um, if you put it in, it uh, presses down on the gland and pays and we Oh, so that's so not to provide 110 volt AC great. power to the butt. Okay. But, but a little pressure down there, right? Here the the center center like that. Something like that. The, the butt plug. <laughs> you're, that. Just no, the in the <laughs> you're in the zone. Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> prostate. <laughs> I think that she could use that information in her right. thing. And, well, what can I do for you, sir? I'm just wondering how you got onto a center line. I simply just was outside the building and it was pointed at me. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I would suggest you go there if you're thinking about getting on. Just hang out and tell people that you think they're funny. You're the security guy and I'll whisk you right upstairs. <laughs> so next weekend, you'll be right on the show. You know, you can do it to the guys that are. Uh, or I would, or what I did was like spend you know ten years of my life in stinky, smoky uh, nightclubs, uh, ruining my youth and my lungs. You could try that also, but I would go the first way. Do you, do you want to do it? You want to do it, Austin? Oh yeah. You you want to give us a couple? I'll tell you what. We're gonna do a break. You do a few characters, right? Characters? Yeah. yeah. Like like Rob does. Uh, Rob does the French guy. He does the young dad. I am so tired of this, and I'm not gonna have it anymore. Are you or He's making me vote. He does the Hawaiian guy. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna tell you one thing right now. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna come back, and you better have my feet so clean. I do the guy with the deviated septum and the Brillo head. So you see what I'm saying? Awesome. Hang on. When we come back, we're gonna check your character. All right, all right. We're going to commit to it, too. We'll be back with, uh, be prepared to be disappointed. After this. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOE-191. Rob Schneider's our guest tonight. Rob is, uh, currently, uh, well, when, when's, uh, when's the next Sailor movie that you're in? It's going to come out? Yeah. Probably Christmas time, I think. That's... 50, 51, or 50, 50 first kisses. It's like, uh, basically the storyline is um, she can only remember things from one day's worth. So he's got to make her fall in love with him, you know, every, every day. day. It's, it's really good. Okay, well, really you, should all, you should all approach right, these exactly. that way. These are the greatest yeah. things about Easter. Try that. Oh, yeah? Cool. Uh, that looks good. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, that's a little that's candy. Good. Good. That's more fun. Huh? All right, bring, some, bring that whole bag in here. Ooh, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, hold on. Sure, it's good. good. Yeah, it's good. It's a little malted, right? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Thank you, Drew. That's just a mouthful of goodness. But that, that is a, that's a big piece of work. Well, that candy. Austin, many, many yeah. malted balls. All right, what? so uh, you want to uh, you want to get on Saturday Night Live one day? Uh, eventually. And uh, you're 17. 17. Enjoy comedy. I enjoy it. All right, so now it's time for you to give us a few of your uh, 
trademark characters that are going to get you on that show. Who here? All right. And action. Live from New York, it's Austin. Hey, good one. Today, yeah. Which guy Which guy is that? Huh? You got to have names, you know? So what guy is the, thinking about the Holocaust? Today? Rob, like Rob is very specific names. He's got French guy, Hawaiian <laughs> guy, Rio guy, yeah. Italian guy. How about, how about Sergio Pendita, the uh, gay soap opera star? All right, let's hear it. And action. Oh, muchas gracias, Hola, Hola, como esta? Mucho. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's all right. solid. You don't see it. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a well-worn character either. I don't know. It's definitely got something going on there. Now, what else do you have in your uh, that's one. arsenal? I don't know. I'm just thinking he's up in the air. Oh, hey. genius. He's never, never thought this yeah, out. Yeah, I'm not wow. crazy. Any, anything else? Stone. It's called 50 First uh, Why are you prompt me? Okay. I don't oh. know what do you think of a character for you. Okay. All right. How about a guy who hangs up the phone after calling <laughs> Love Letter? <laughs> Action. You guys all try quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show business is easy. If people think it's hard, it's not. It's just, they'll come to you. Trust me. Also, I, I think Rob may be not the greatest example of this because he seemed to have gotten started fairly early and was funny fairly early but yeah if i wouldn't have success with it very early i would quit but you know it seems like there's something there is a common thread a lot of people that are successful they relinquish their youth to yeah something I, well, how old were you when, you when you got on snl uh 23 something like that. and are you but before that you still feel as though you spent years yeah no you know it was like seven years in nightclubs before yeah. that you know yeah so it was, uh, yeah, it was basically yeah, giving up your youth. So, I mean, you got started, you were in high school when you were doing Yeah, like 17, I was, I, was, I was working at a, uh, I, had a, I was selling shoes in the daytime and going to school at the same time and went in nightclubs. Wow. It was nuts. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. She sells a podcast. She sells a podcast. Yeah. Very, very good free, free uh, preparation for show business that she sells. It's also good for guessing what the size of women's feet it comes in handy, believe it or not. Yeah. Because... <laughs> I don't know. But it just does. You can just say size 8, right? And they go, yeah. And they go, how do you know that? And the conversation's over. Huh? Oh, no one Morgan? Then it leads right to sex. <laughs> you're, uh, you're 15? What's up? Okay, well, when I masturbate to you in the orgasm, I'm going to be thinking about myself. Mm-hmm. Wow. About yourself doing something? That's nice. Just 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 yourself just smiling? What? Like class? What? what are you thinking? No, just myself, like, achieving things or losing weight. feel bad for him. Okay. All right. And uh, you, you picture you yourself so doing what, like, like physically. Let me just, I mean, just talk it out so we can image you. We'll get the image here. So you think yourself doing good and losing weight, and then you could have an orgasm. Yeah. Like, if I just think about that, I, I, I'm not like to hurt, but I can't cry that. Well, guys, uh, any, any guy, I mean, like, uh, like even like a, a movie star, I'm not saying me. Like, uh, like, Brad like a movie star who's been in good movies. Brad Pitt? Yeah. Does nothing? You'd rather think about yourself uh, getting an A in science? Um, badly, yeah. What if you picture Brad Pitt? Wow. Getting an A, I'm getting a B. Oh. Minus, oh, a B plus. Oh, D. No, no, yes, not D. Not D. Oh, it's a credit. Oh, yes, I'll go after school after school. I'm it's getting a D. Wait, wait, why mind the <laughs> He's in the downswing already. So Rob Schneider's only not funny in movies? Is that the lesson? Yeah, actually the impression I get is he's one of those naturally funny people who's cool to hang out with. And people want to put him in movies because they think it's seen like he's funny. But when you put him in movies, he's not funny. Well, he's not funny. 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 Do you, do you physically, I mean, do you see yourself or your eyes closed and you see yourself or you My just sort of feel Oh, God, oh, yeah, paramecium, oh, yeah, oh, God, the cell membrane, oh! 
I would. Uh, I used to picture myself in high school uh, riding a Led Zeppelin on a peachy folder in order to have an orgasm. I didn't set my goals <laughs> hey, quite as well. No, the peachy folder was hot. She wants the tennis you know, you know, it's just that the dress is up a little bit as she's doing the swing. You know what I'm talking about. She's certainly yeah. She's oh, yeah. Yeah. So The doodling of the pizza folder and the orgasm just happened to be things that were happening all the time. Oh, yeah. Actually, I actually put a hole in the pizza folder yeah, and raped right. it. All right, so yeah, we I, don't have an answer for Morgan. Uh, uh, although, to be so self-absorbed... Uh, Does your mom say you're the prettiest girl in school? Sure seems like a trauma thing. Right. Any trauma, Morgan? Did your mom tell you the most beautiful girl in school? What? Did your mom ever say you the prettiest girl in school? Uh, yeah, but I'm... Hey, wow. Wow. she was wild. Wow. That was from 35 feet, gentlemen. Yeah. Did your mom have said you the most beautiful girl in school? Yeah. Okay. Three points. Well, I think that there's an issue here about, like, perfection and, like, a control. But why does that become sexual for me? That's what I can't put together. I, I'm with you all the way on the, the personality stuff. But usually to, to sexualize all that, you gotta throw in some trauma. It's, just, it's some, it's some, it, it, it's some, nothing, don't get me wrong, but it has to be with some ego about, about yourself, I think, and, and like, uh, your parents put you on a pedestal, and this was like, uh... Do you have an eating disorder? No, I don't. Your, your parents put a lot of pressure on you, or are they achievers? Yeah. There we go. Are you one of your parents a, an attorney or something like that? Uh, I was, but not anymore. Ooh. Prettiest girl in the whole school. You're fat. I mean, girl. Well, Morgan, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, the, uh, what I, we can say is that it, it suggests that you're so self-absorbed you may not be available for relationships in a way that would be healthy and satisfying to you. I kind of work on that. Yeah, and I think it is it's like you're focusing so much on excelling and getting approval from your parents. And I think it's skewering things, your, your mental outlook and even your sexuality at this point. Though, I think you're going to easily get over it. I think this little little thing you, you're having now, you'll get over it. You'll meet some really hot guy, and he'll have, like, some pectoral muscles and chest hair. But I, my sense is she's going to be going for the, the ultra-powerful guy that's sort of an a-hole and uh, mistreats her. But be careful with your attraction. I think that you're I'm married. I think you're going to find out. Yeah, we can't have wrong. I, I think the, the ultra-powerful alpha male type, right? Immediately. Was, I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, absolutely. And... Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, be careful with that because that may be where your sexuality gets around. But I, I think that there's some underlying self-doubt and self-esteem oh, problem yeah. over oh, here yes. that you can't live up to that those high expectations and trying to achieve those expectations even turns her on sexually. Mm. She needs uh, like a wine cooler in Tiger Beat magazine and I think it's Take some pressure off yourself. Come into focus. Take it easy. You don't have to be the prettiest, smartest girl in school. You, can, you know, the, you don't have to do that. Mike? Yeah, you're 28. Yeah, what's up? Um, I have a problem with uh, relationships lately. Uh, my three girlfriends I had been in relationships, and all of them that went outside of it. Mm -hmm. and they cheated on you? Yeah, okay. all of them. I, I consider myself a pretty good boyfriend. You know, I, I, I do things for them. I give them nice gifts. Who are these girls? So who are you falling? You're falling for girls that are problem girls. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Where are you meeting these girls? Just so I could know. I mean, they just go ahead where you meet these girls. <laughs> whenever I hear a really bad girl, I'm just amazed that I never lived with her. You know, whenever I hear these stories, I'm like, did I die? So what? No, but where are you meeting these women? Usually at work or through my friends or, you know. Okay, first of all, that's got to stop because your friends are losers. Stop. I'm sorry. No, but seriously, you got to change your habits. You got to change where you're going. You're meeting them at bars. Where are you meeting them? Right. Bars, right? Yeah, or at work. All right. Well, they, you don't want to go out with girls at work. You want you want you know different interests, right? Right. All right. Well, what about this new one? How long have you been with her? Uh, about a year and eight months. But she's great. I mean, um, she's fifty nice. I actually moved in with her two months ago. No, you cheated. But but you know, I feel I feel the need to go outside. No, you cheated. So it's payback. All right. Here's the deal. Okay. So wait a minute. So now she's not cheating with you. She's committed. You want to go and cheat and get revenge on her. <laughs> not revenge on her. I, don't, I really don't know why I feel the need to do Was that. your mom an alcoholic? No. no. Uh, my mom was an avid uh, born again Christian after What's she was alcoholic. the other end. It is, it is true. We usually become a born again after you do something. What, what did she do that made her need to be born again? Well, actually, my, my dad was pretty abusive towards her, and uh, that's what I was out for that was the church. 
Okay, right. Where's my bird? Well, so, so there's some Born. trauma rolling around there in the past. You see, he's, he's a fixer. He'll yep. fix these on him. Right. And he resents the ones that are actually available to him. He's either, either he takes the role of the one big cheater or he's the cheater. One once the she's okay, once you're with a girl who's okay, you're not interested anymore. Right. You yeah. need a crazy woman. Right. Well, let me give you a place to go find some crazy women. Hollywood. Los Angeles. I'm, I'm opening it up to Los Angeles. 213 area code 310. Yes. You know, and anywhere, and also the Valley, 818. Sure. I grew up there. And sure, I mean, it's, uh, North Hollywood, you have a lot of some actors are just starting out, and they're the craziest. I went to North Hollywood High. Uh, There's a lot of bars in there. Yes. Most of the windows. Uh, also, um, drug rehab. Yeah, CA. You get to that Hollywood CA meeting, no, it's a good place. You got to, uh, you know, um, I think there's some therapy issues you have to deal with on your own. So it's okay for you to be with a woman who doesn't have huge problems that you have to deal with all the time. If you're interested. Why do we the sense that you're the product of an alcoholic family system? Well, my dad was. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And why not say that 10 minutes yeah. ago when Drew brings it up? Because I'm from the top of the key, Drew brings it. And, and Mike, you need to get involved with some alcohol. Because that's that's where you're gonna develop the growth that allows you to break out of this pattern you're in. And until you do that, you're gonna ruin this relationship. It's yeah, a good one. Yeah, really love her. She's a good one. You're gonna ruin this one. Alanox sponsor steps all the way. If you do those things, things will change. Can you do that, Mike? Yeah, I think I can. Give yeah. right. the call. Yeah, maybe uh, you get a hot sponsor and bang her. Yeah, you never know. There's also a lot of uh, unhealthy women in that organization. <laughs> and also, he's the kind of guy who, if he didn't cheat, would let his girl find out about it because it doesn't. So that happen. way, you can saw, you can get her going crazy yeah. again, and now you're interested again. Well, that's right. That's an interesting strategy. It does yeah. not complete the yeah. cycle. If you get her anyway. crazy and get her loopy and emotionally whacked, wow! Then she's exciting again. No longer the bore that you have to come home to to find her with cooked meals. Well, and stuff. It, it's 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 interesting that, and I don't know what the percentage is, but it's certainly with guys. Bored. I would say just in general, 70% of people who cheat are doing it just to get laid, to have sex with someone other than the person they're having sex yeah, with. But there's a, also a decent percentage who are doing it to send a message, to create a cycle, to, to dance. And they magically, you'll know who those people are because they will let the other person find out about it. Yes. They will leave yes. things on the computer, they will leave notes in their pants when their woman does the laundry or whatever. They get something out of chaos. They, right. They, they, well, they, they, get, they, they get a distance from intimacy for one thing. Okay. They get to avoid intimacy. Interesting. And the other thing is they gratify for that chaos book. Crystal? I'm a chaos grapper, by the way. Are you? You're into that? I'm, I'm out of it. He's done. Recovering chaos guy. Crystal? Yeah? You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Um, I have, um... Problem. We have to in February, I screwed up on my birth control pills. Ooh, and, February. Yeah, I forgot quite a few. So go on. And, um... Are you pregnant? Or I don't know what I'm calling about. I took a pregnancy test and it came up negative. Hey! That's good. That's good. <laughs> you may want to switch to the really patch. You may want to switch. Nauseous. Chris, you may want to switch to the patch also. It's just a new thing now. Yeah, you, you don't have to take the pill every day. Yeah. You don't think if you have a patch, it lasts for two weeks, right? Once, Wait, once, one week. once a week, stick it right, right, right to the roof of the mouth. You don't even know it's there. You become, really? Yeah, once you do that, that way, because, you know, hey, taking a pill every day, who can remember that? <laughs> Not me. Well, do that. what's your question? Well, I was just wondering um, how accurate are those pre pregnancy tests? Pretty accurate, most of them. Not 100%, but fairly accurate. There are there is like one percent to three percent of women out there who uh, those tests don't work on. That's right. But you're not one of those probably, so don't worry about it. But however, don't get in this situation. Think of this as a near miss. You know they say that like the plane almost. You know this is a near miss. You don't want to do this next time, right? Because what if you really are? So why don't you try a different form of contraception? Patch or shot? Or yeah, I think I wear a condom for crying out loud. Condom, thank you. Can you wear a Z-bit? You know, why are you taking all the? Uh, well, how long? Stuff? You, how, how long have you been with the guy? A year and a half, or two and a half years. Sorry. Two and a half. Yeah. I don't wear a condom. He's old enough now. Are you in love? Yeah, we're married. Who are you married? Yeah. We got married young, right? Yeah. Are you trying? Do you want to get pregnant? Not yet. Not yet. It says here you were concerned that the birth control pill is going to harm the child if you were. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah, you're okay. But that happens all the time. I don't think I got born. I don't think the three guys in this room got born. Yeah. Who you're scared of now. Crystal, what, uh, what's your husband do for a living? 
He's an engineer. Good. What, what's he work on? An uh, engineer. On electronics. All right, good. He's a decent guy. You love him? Yes. Everything's good? Yeah. Okay, so you want to wait a little while before you start a family, fine. Get on that path. All right, and I, I don't want to uh, <clears throat> crap on, uh, on Rob's advice, but I don't see anyone going to a condom after a couple of years of not using a condom in a relationship. Yeah. That is a big penile step backwards yeah. for a lot of guys. Unless you get the really good ones. Are they oh, good? Do they have good ones? You know, the kind that stimulate the guy more than No, no, they're not. No, there's a couple of good ones. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The Magnum's good for the uh, ego. Yeah, no, these, uh, you know, Avanti's a good one. You know, it's, oh, really? It's, it's, it's ten times uh, thinner than the, the thin human hair. Then there's the, you know, um, and it's, it's pretty safe. It's not a regular condom. Right. It's not like, what do they call it? A pro, a, uh, well, it's a polyurethane. It's a different right. thing. But it's, um, it, uh, it's, it supposedly has, like, more heat through there. It's better, you know. So do they, do they, I'd like to pick one that, when you have your orgasm, it makes that bow yeah. sound. Or, yeah. That okay. big bass drum sort of bow. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. would just novelty sounds at various times. Or how about... Yeah, a slide, 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 slide whistle. Yeah, slide whistle. Woo! Or the sound that the sound the blackjack dealer makes when he's leaving the table. That hand <laughs> clap and then the... the uh, that, also, that you know the, the, uh, the office basketball hoop? Score! Yeah. <laughs> From, from way downtown! Yeah. Remember the bonk, Elka bonk song? They you know? put, they get like greeting cards that have messages yes. and stuff in them now. They can certainly do this. You can get the Marv Allen one. From way downtown! <laughs> hey Marv, where'd you pick up the hooker? From no, way no. downtown! Not the golf. Yes. That's it, that one. You get it. No, I still, I still want the bow. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to take a quick break. That's it. Right. It's going so well. Oh no, we're going, we're really? doing good. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're in like 30 seconds. No, now. that's that's like the. Uh, that's as you're putting it on. No, yeah. no, no, no. Now that says it is over soon, too soon. Yeah, that's, that's broken. That's, no, that's broken. <laughs> no, that's when you when you're putting it on. She <laughs> <laughs> was so excited over there. Mary, we're not going to break. We're going to talk. What do we got, Mary? What's up? She's 21. She thinks her best female friend has a crush on her. Hey. I like this call. Talk about it. Really weird. Um, Tell me, what did she do? That? How do you know she's she's on? She's turning on. She's on to you. Well, she tells me about her sex dreams, and I happen to star in them. Wow. Oh, really? she, you know she's gay? No, no, she's married and she's pregnant. Ah. Yeah. Is she like? Wait, wait, wait. Is she in the last trimester of pregnancy? Um, she just started it, but this yeah. is an ongoing situation. Yeah, before she was pregnant. Yeah. 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 I was texting about me and we worked at the same place and she was always grabbing my ass. Where'd you work? Always filling me up. We were working at a coffee shop and uh, she, like, in front of customers and everything. And, so like, she's, she's got to, this is back to that chaos. Mm, yeah. Probably it's a way to get she, more stuff. She's married, right? No, we were, we were both single while well, we had. No, 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 no. So you said she's married. Is she married? No, but before she got married, she just got married. Stop saying no. Wait, wait, married. Is she married? Yes. No, yes. She's married now. She's just got married at the beginning just of the year. Just say yes. Oh, and she's right pregnant. After she got pregnant. She got pregnant. Okay. okay. She's, she's, she, you know what? She, before, like six months ago. We understand. We understand. Okay, let me ask you this. In her fantasies, does she say that there's like, a, there's more than, there's a guy there too, Sorry, not just you, right? No, but she's gotten her husband. That was you? Like, even well, hold on. Hold on. Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, wow. Mary. Let me yell at Mary for a second. Mary. What? Stop. Please, with the word no out of every, the first word out of your mouth is no, and then you change the subject and or agree. Yeah. But don't say no every single time, especially when we're asking things that are correct. Now, what about Rob's question? Did, does she have this fantasy with you, or is there any other guy involved? Uh, she's only mentioned me, but okay. she talked to her husband about it, and apparently, like, she's gotten this threesome idea into his head, and I... What do you... She's gotten into his head. Uh, she, yeah, she's she been is, talking to him about it. Listen, is Mary, oh, no. is she, she a drug addict? No, no. She's never been addicted to anything? I'm sorry, me? She, she's never been addicted to anything? Not that I know. And okay. what about the threesome? That doesn't sound like a good idea to you? Oh, no, I told her I would never do anything like that. Yeah, well, and that's a three and a half, by the way, if she's pregnant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And have you, that's a four. <clears throat> is she ever... Before she was pregnant, she was mentioning stuff like that about her. Do you, do you, yeah, but do you know her to be a very chaotic person? 
is just like cheering right now. Like, no, she will not have to worry about if people hitting on her husband anymore. Uh, 
<laughs> that is a weird lady. She wants to be a perfect receptive lady. How old was your boyfriend? Fourteen. How about the next one? Uh, I didn't date until I was like a freshman. Fourteen. How old was that boyfriend? Uh, I am 19, 16. There you go. All right, the 19-year-old. Is he the one that got you started all this stuff? No. She was no. doing it before that. All right. Let's try. And were, they, were you, you weren't having sex with the guys, just phone sex? Yeah. You've had sex, though, right? I started having sex this year. Oh, okay. Like, I never had an orgasm. Like, I faked it. Like, completely. It was just, like, whole moaning type kind of thing. Yeah. Like, but I you could have orgasms on the phone. No, no. She learned how to fake it on the phone. Yeah. Oh. And so if anything, I'm doing it or anything, like, I'm totally not satisfied with anything. Like, I can watch, like, read a newspaper on how it's sex. I mean, it's like, thinking about the Holocaust, right? <laughs> 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 like, you know, like, I had to be done. You got a little of that little girl thing going on. There's definitely some issues here. Uh, my dad beating her. There you go. He did. I mean, and he did this for some years? Uh, he's done it for so a little bit. He's done it recently. And it's like, I don't know why it was. Yeah, 
that's what they show him. And, or he rents a film, or he sees her at the local uh, nudie bar. And he's repulsed and yet turned on. Yes. As am I. <laughs> Did they got, a, got a reaction from the doctor on that one. Yeah. Rob, uh, we, I got to drink some green tea. Oh, I got to take a break. I think he's all good. I know. Ooh, I feel its whole escort. Yeah. Howdy. Oh, that face skimmer. Hey everybody, love mine. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Chris Titus is going to be in here tomorrow night. Tonight we got uh, Rob Schneider. It was nice stuff just to uh, drop by and uh, hang out. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm a big fan of I love my all these years. <laughs> big yeah. fan. Big fan. Drew, you got a call? Line five? Oh, no. Yeah. Right on, buddy. 23. That's a like non-trivial. Yeah, for uh, a show. I was wondering if you know Jimmy's so good, maybe you could hook me up. All right, what is it? I'll write it down and present it to your writers meeting tomorrow. Um, it's an idea for uh, a couple of young guys that ride around on bikes and interact with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe, like, go into a couple of bars at closing time to talk to some drunk people and uh, make them do things for the Lord. Like some push ups or something like that. Mormon guys on bike. Do you have a name for it? Um, not really. It's just kind of a. Mormon guys on bike. Do you have anything more funny for them to do? Um, they could set up checkpoints and uh, just harass people, basically. Where is the joke? I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny. All right. The Mormon guys pretty angry. I think it's good. Angry Mormon guys. Yeah, angry, angry Mormon guys beating people up. Yeah. Uh, I think you have a sketch. They need to ride their bike somewhere funny. Do you have a funny yeah, place for them? Like uh, a porn store would be good. And maybe a sure. Uh, Why wouldn't they? <laughs> How are people going to know these are Mormon guys? Because they're going to wear the ties and they're going to have Bibles. The <laughs> white bills. Okay. Are you Mormon? No, I'm not a Mormon. Okay, what is the second premise? I'll present this to my Okay, um, I also got an idea for uh, an Iraqi supermarket sweep where they... Uh, Basically, when they have to sweep up all the rubble after somebody bombs the supermarket. Oh. They basically just crash through the door and start picking people off and they case and stuff like that. Yeah, you're right. It's bad of me to suggest that Iraq has ever been bombed. Uh, yeah. Hold on, is this Otto? Do you have bus driver on the sentence? Hey, well, you know, Otto, uh, maybe a little less pot, these ideas might look different. Again, uh, not fully fledged out ideas, but uh, fleshed out ideas. But you know, it's so funny that when you when you do testing on people, that they, they overestimate, they profoundly overestimate their creativity and what they can accomplish when they're on drugs. Yeah. They, they, you know, when they get when they get sober, they're like, oh my god. Well, you know, they they, they always yeah. talk about booze. You know, the sort of beer goggle thing. As far as you you get drunk, you see some chick, she's a five, but you think she's a nine because you're drunk. Pot is sort of a brain goggle thing, and that you think your ideas are kind of genius because you're. It's a, it's a difference. You're confusing the high with the, your idea. Being That's good. right. The feeling. Right. right. It's, 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 you're, right. You're, you're, you're getting confused. I'm excited about something. It's got to be my stupid idea. That's right. Not the fact that you're just wait. You're high. That's actually a great insight. I read. Yeah, Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> We've already learned it too. <laughs> this is going to be a good movie. It's so interesting. I mean, it, you read it? We're both in it. Kimmy? Hi. What's up? You're 16? Yeah. Yeah. We'll just about 17 tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? Yeah. Day after 420. Yeah. Happy birthday, you're enough to So, what's your question? What do you got? Okay, well, I have some things with, like, older guys. Yeah, I mean, no, go ahead. It's horrible. Oh, what is it? How horrible? Well, how old? Like 30. Oh, sure. Well, how long has this been going on? Idiots. I don't know. I. Just, how many years have you been doing that? This is going on. You know what? I don't know. I just know. What do you mean? How old were you? 14? Was when that? I was somebody in their 20s. No. Yeah. Okay. There we were. Okay. Can you bring me a soda when you come back? Yeah. Like horses and pigs. Oh. My mom leaves me here. I've never even been to a mall. Right? Are you divorced? Uh, no. I didn't divorce forever, but she had an affair. Well, she moved me here, and um. Like, I met this older guy, and I dated him for a while, and now I just, I like older guys. Like, All right, well, how, you were 14 when you met a guy who was in his 20s? Yeah. 
18, 19, yeah. 18, 19, and you dated him, you had sex with him? Yeah. Alright, and, okay. and now, okay. are you dating anyone? A few guys. Same guys. Nothing, like, nothing serious. And how old are they? Um, 18, 17. Good. But that's not really guys in their 30s. No, but I take interest. Um, like, today, there were men in their 30s, and I was just like, ah. <laughs> well, yeah, just don't so, act on it. And it's not just that, it's... it's well, guys are more interesting when they when they get older, but it doesn't mean you have to have relationships with them, right? It's just, the problem is not your attraction, it's the guy that would respond to that attraction that bothers us. Well, the 30-year-old guy that would date a 16-year-old is a, 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 a problem. He's not a good guy. Right. Unless he's a producer. Yeah. yeah. Unless he can help you in your career. Right. So, Kimmy. Yeah. Where's your dad? Um, my dad... You have no contact with your father. I do talk to my dad. My dad is a businessman. Um, you How often do you talk to him? You don't, when was the last time you lived with him? I'm, I don't live with my dad. I can't. My Why? Dad, he drives me nuts. Why? He's very, um, he's an idiot. Like, I don't, How? How is he an idiot? He's an idiot. He, he manipulates people. He's all business. He works nonstop. My um, stepmom is like oh, mom, a hardcore right here, Christian right. woman. She. What if you just live with her for a little while? Just to try to establish a kind of relationship. Well, she's living with the uh, mom. Yeah. Right? He's all yeah, work. Oh, wait, with no. Dad, be, so. Well, but he's, no, maybe he's an idiot. Like that. I have a stepdad here. Is yeah. he good? He's a good guy. Yeah. Christian. Oh, okay. But and it's it's not just the older guys. They're like, it's yes. different nationalities. I don't Sure. Know. Filipinos. Why not? Oh, yeah. What do you like? You like <laughs> Filipino guys? Yeah, only. I Are you from Filipino? Our Filipino. Here we you go. You only like Filipino guys? No, I'm not. I like Russians. I don't like any white. Oh, Russians are white guys. Oh, oh, Filipinos. Like you had your, yeah, your gold there for a while. They, they cook. Language. They're nice. They've got a lot of body hair. Right. Listen, Kimmy, <laughs> don't that. Uh, so don't what's the deal? I mean, what, <laughs> that's it. Give yourself some. I just want to know if it's normal to be liking guys. Like it is normal to like older guys, but you shouldn't be dating guys because they'd be. Uh, you shouldn't yes. be dating guys at sixteen or older. It that was not older. normal to really follow through on it. It's not, right. like one thing to be attracted; it's another thing to actually have a relationship with somebody. That and and let's just say this: that it's normal to have all sorts of thoughts. It's normal to have homicidal thoughts at times. It's normal to have suicidal thoughts at times. It's normal to fantasize about. Family members, it's normal stuff to, like that. To, I think family we're members. We're really learning something about Adam tonight. Though. You can also be a little uncomfortable. I masturbate to only pictures of yourself succeeding at things. We learned a lot. <laughs> I'm going to screw my sister. I'm going to kill her. Then I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> this is basically my plan. No, I'm saying you don't have to judge yourself based on these these thoughts. Judge yourself based on the actions. Yes. We're asking you not to act on it. There you go. All right. We need to uh, take a break. Take that's a it? break. Yeah. Wow. What happened? I think time flies. Okay, all right. Just get into it. Warm it up. Well, well hang around. I guess we'll be on a battle. <laughs> we'll be back. Everybody, that's the show. Christopher Titus in here tomorrow night. I want to thank Rob Schneider for coming by. Always thank good you, to see him. Uh, big fan of the show. Nice to see you guys again. It was a pleasure. And I'm just, I learned something. A woman who can masturbate to herself, uh, images of herself succeeding. That's a new one. I called that one, huh? Mom, yes, you guys were right yes. I'm going to masturbate to her masturbating to herself. It's ironic. But I think you're pretty good. You're the whole school doesn't need anybody to say different. You're the pretty oh. best girl ever. You're so beautiful. Oh. Just like mommy. Rob, I'm going to need you in action. <laughs> That's good. Go on, Oh, you're That's so that. pretty, pretty girls. True, shut up. Pretty good in the whole school. <laughs> no one prettier than you. All right, be quiet, be quiet. I'm smarter, but you're the prettiest. <laughs> Every girl is smart, but you're so pretty, you make up for how dumb you are. That is the show. Uh, Rob, thanks for coming by. Come by anytime you like. And I'll take you up on that now. We would appreciate it. So until next time, it's Adam Crow for Dr. Drew saying, Mahala. Well, I was swearing, and he did it born again, and I said, the airport got me, please. <laughs> Let me be born again. No, oh, I'm 16. Oh. I swore twice during the game show. I feel bad. I need to be born again. Oh, you use F1 and S word twice. Oh, money. I gotta get my license, but first I'll be born again. Ah, shut up. This is the one life.
He makes peace. No, no, no. I'll stand behind you, but you asked me, doesn't that bother you? You asked me that. I said, no. That, I, I didn't even know. There must have been some weird interview yeah, between the, like, the Penske I'll parents. Two days now, I have a lot of Gandhi, whereas you do have a lot of Gandhi. Or, uh, actually, we don't know anything about his siblings or lot of Shut through his mic off. Chris for Titus is our guest tonight. Uh, Chris for, you know, from uh, Titus and uh, stand up and, uh, and my new drama pilot on NBC that has not been picked up yet. Oh, really? I think it's drama, full on drama. I could see it. Yeah, yeah. really? It scared the hell out of me because uh, my body's so used to getting to a punchline. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, it felt like that the entire shoot. Really? <laughs> yeah, just so that. But the crash was off. I mean, you're not supposed to be fine. Yeah, yeah but what? It's, like, it's like a heroin addiction. You just needed it. I needed the release of the, of the last For the protection, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I'm a tough guy. I play badass in it. What is the premise of it? Uh, it's called Future Tense. A uh, really cool idea. Basically, uh, uh, Law and Order, but in the future. And uh, I play, I play Alexander Chase. Yeah. And, yeah. He's uh, he, by his own rules. Oh, he plays by his own rules. Definitely, kind of a Bobby Kennedy guy. You know, he doesn't take any crap. From the, and uh, he uh, basically he runs the Techno Crimes Task Force. So when genetic crimes comes down, I get involved in the genetic crime. Oh, not is this kind of a like pretty cool man. born identity kind of vibe? It's a little it's a little minority report, I guess. No, I mean minority report. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Born identity. fighting in the future. Uh, yeah, born identity. That was like the little wimpy guy who was the superhero. Wrong right, one. Right, right. right. right, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, not the other one. No, we have genetic crime where like people that like they had a kid that was good at basketball. So in the, in the, the doctors can manipulate the genes of the future and like this one kid we find he's got bones growing out of his body and his head's all just weird. Yeah. Pretty cool show. It's yeah. pretty yeah, pretty cool. Well, my, but I say things like they go. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, I got a couple weeks. You must be crossing. What show? Wait a minute. I can't believe they didn't pick it up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because it didn't get picked up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I say things like uh, one of my one of my assistants and daddy goes. He says, uh, uh, "A hacker's crashed the satellite grid. There's tin. It's raining tin." And I go, "Let's go." 
I walk up down the set with four guys behind me in slow motion. It's fun. Really? You know, my plan uh, for uh, Friday is to get that up here. Still that for your masturbating. <laughs> I can fight crime for myself, but we have the technologies in place. Oh, good point. I would like every oh, head to be yeah. recognized oh, working my God. on a lie detector Thank that you. was one of the and foolproof. There you go. And we're, we're, we'll toss out the jury system. No judges. You can't buy your way anywhere. It's a very simple, and there's not, you know, he's been in, he's been waiting to, uh, he's been arraigned, but he's been waiting to come to trial for 16 months. None of that rotting huh. away, nothing. It's just, and you treat it like, like the breathalyzer, which is, cop pulls you over, tells you, you got to blow into the breathalyzer. You can say no, but that's pretty much just an admission of guilt. Right. You're still going to get the 502. This is that. They pull you up. Hey, we wouldn't even have to get OJ out of his car. They no, shoot you, you, you basically, if you lie, you did it, boom, they shoot you in the car. And then they have a tow truck come well, to No, it, it, we don't always shoot well, you. If, if it's, you well, know, what if the guy did it, though? Oh, yeah, I mean, you stole well, your murder. Well, uh, you shoot him right in the car. It's not all murder. All right. if, if you stole a bicycle, nothing. Well, I wasn't saying shoot the bicycle. You stole a car. OJ. Oh, OJ, yeah, OJ gets shot. But <laughs> if he did it, if he did it, we got to see if he did it. Yeah, if he did it. That, this is the point. Now, here's the whole thing. The, uh, the innocent... If you didn't do anything, you, this is the greatest oh, technology I'm wrong. in the world. This isn't, there's, there's not this the isn't inner for city Japanese. guy who's been sent right. up the river by the all white jury. Right, right. None, none of this going we on. You worry about innocent, no proven guilty. No driving while black, you wouldn't get that at all. No. You just stop for no reason. Well, that would still be. <laughs> okay, there you go. Come on. But like, don't get it. Don't get it. Don't get Come on. There is profiling needed in this country. Don't you say that? Absolutely. <laughs> You're blonde. You're cool. Yeah, I'm a six-two blonde white guy. You're good. Yeah. But, uh, but we just put this in place. We we come up with a test. We, we we test this device. We all decide it becomes an international thing, and that's it. There's none of this. You know. You know. You're rounding everyone up. You put them on Guantanamo Bay, or you put them in the terrorists. You do everything. Everyone's a waiting trial. Everyone's One court second. systems are all clogged up, and it works with yep. everything. Some guy yeah. says he fell in a casino. We just say, did you do it on purpose or not? Once we figure it out, boom, we got it. Yeah. And it's done. All the, all the trial lawyer, lawyers are out of place. All the judges, no work anymore. It's genius. Huh? Yeah. And Lacey Peterson's husband, we'd already know. We wouldn't have to go through the whole thing. Right. This, this thing's going to drag on. Oh, it's going to be horrible. And it's going to cost millions of dollars. Right. What? Do we need this? No. All right. And you know what the whole thing about that is? That, you know, we've all, if you're in a long-term relationship, you've thought about killing your partner. You just have to. No. Point, you've thought about it. <laughs> Is 
is there an insurance claim for that on the one? And it's always it's always inevitable. A week or two two months earlier, they take out these big these big life insurance policies on them, and now you know people can all that. Yeah, in all things. This guy did every, every this guy did everything wrong. He insurance policy, you know, went fishing Christmas Eve with his eight months pregnant wife. Looks like sold her car like fourteen minutes after the cop showed up at his house. He's like, I'm trying to get her. Like, ah, she's not here. And, right. You know, it was like that fast. He did everything he wasn't supposed to do. The fast big receipt for ankle weights. And <laughs> Come on, and he can't produce the ankle weights. Uh, and ankle weights is kind of like my dad did ankle weights. I saw him wearing in 1964. He still has. Yeah, them you don't misplace them. Ankle weights. You don't just say, "What the hell? Pack my ankle weights." You don't just lose them in the mall. It's not like you're jogging with ankle weights. One flies off, and you don't notice it for four or five miles. You look down. Wait a minute. Well, if it one did fall off, you make that big circle because you'd be off, and you can eventually come back to it, pick it up, and go on straight. <laughs> that's right. We just pull it to the lovely veer. Slowly veer. Oh, yes, that's happened to me many times. <laughs> Same with the wrist weights and the masturbation. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's. That's uh, why I break to the left, though. I like the guys who wear the ankle weights to work, is that something's really going on. So I don't <laughs> got the time to work out, but uh, what I did is I took this coffee can and filled it with cement and dropped it down my pants. There you go. And we're yeah, right now. Right now. <laughs> right now. around with me every day. I have a patient say something like that all the time. They go, well, I walk from my car and up a flight of stairs every day. That's right. So I don't need to work out. That's valid exercise? No, I don't need to work out. Drew, what about the ankle weights? Not, all it does is really flatten your arches, right? <laughs> Church of choice. Is that. Scott? Yeah? You're 14? Yep. What's up? Uh, well, I me and my girlfriend have been off for like a month and a half now. And I wasn't, I didn't have an erection on me, but I ejaculated. Yeah. While you were with the girl? Yeah. All right. So you were super excited? No, I wasn't at all. You weren't? No. You didn't have an erection. You didn't have an erection. You weren't excited, but something came out of you. She was. She wasn't doing anything to you. Well, she was like rubbing my leg, but that's it. Do you have any medic? Are you on medication? No. Not. Do you have any medical problems? No. Hmm. Were you yeah. loaded at the time? Was that what? Intoxicated right now? No. I did a little bit of drugs, but not much. What? What'd you do? Mm. Were you intoxicated? It's a bad sign. Casual ejaculate, that's not good, just for, just for no reason. It's yeah. a casual ejaculate. It's a, exactly. And, and no sensation. No. You didn't feel like you were having an orgasm. No. How'd you I, know I you know had one? one? Yeah. I just felt it. Well, you got, you felt it where? On your leg? I felt that was wetness. Maybe well, a pigeon crapped on you. How do you, how do you know it wasn't urine? Uh, I went to the bathroom and said, No, Drew says no. Drew says bogus. No, it's not. Do you masturbate? Yeah. Same stuff comes out of you? Yeah. And uh, does it uh, <laughs> just check it? Do you get an erection when you do that? Yeah. And that works? Yeah. And you have the sensation? Yeah. Had you just ejaculated recently before this all happened? Uh, this morning. No, I mean before this spontaneous stuff came out? Yeah. How long before the spontaneous emission had you ejaculated? About you... six hours. Maybe possibly something left over from that. Yeah, once in a while. You but, get the residual there? Yeah, my uh, my flume is not long enough really to. But I imagine if you had a little dog leg or something, and it something could get caught up, move the right way, and comes yeah. out. He says it happened twice yeah. in the same evening. I don't think he. I don't think he knows his uh, his sack the way we do. Scott. Yeah. This happened twice in the same evening. No, two different times. Two different times. Yeah. How f uh, how far apart? Uh, one was on Wednesday and the other one was on Saturday. Do you, are you sexually active? No. What should you do, Drew? Uh, you know, I wonder if it's some other kind of problem, like, like a lymphatic obstruction or something. There are other things that can drain out. Why don't you have an erection when you're screwing around with your woman? I don't know. <laughs> Rubbing your leg thing wasn't working, huh? No. Well, you're, you're kissing and stuff? No, not the time. Hmm. You, yeah. should, you should see a urologist, though, just in case this is not seen in something else. Like what? Soul. Like soul. Like soul. But no, there can be, there can be lymphatic drainage. <laughs> Red? Yeah, we, weird things. I mean, I, during my wife's pregnancy, we had a very large break in her sexual activity, and, mm -hmm. and then we had, and, uh, and the blood came out. With it. Oh, yeah. And I went to the doctor, and he said, he <laughs> said you're not having sex, are you? Oh really? And I was like, well, you know, I, I, turned, I thought it was an invitation. I'm like, you know, uh, yeah, she's pregnant, but I can, you know, we'll get to something later. And he said that you need to, which is great. I can basically have a prescription. Yeah, you know, yeah, or have my wife. Yeah, here, get a little help, hon. Come on, I'm, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs>
and, uh, and she took care of it. Or, or I could go in for therapy. <laughs> exactly. I got a number from the doctor. It's in a world pool of scientists may be A little bit of prescription. Wow. <laughs> Sarah? Yeah. You're 20? What's up? Yeah. Hold on. I can't believe a doctor had to tell you to beat off. <laughs> well, what do you think? I was feeling guilty because my wife was pregnant. She was upset. There was all these hormones going on. And, you know, I was feeling guilty. That's where I retreat to my world of masturbation. Hell, <laughs> God, take me away. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's where I go into my own little world. World of masturbation. Thank you. Sarah. World of masturbation. Sarah, you're in California. Is you're, that you're 20. <laughs> What's up? For about a year, two guys. Okay. I have a baby. Uh, in the past month, I've been having like, these really detailed, very sexual dreams about. Virgin girls. Is that your phone, baby? Yeah, what? it's gonna die. Okay. So what do you mean, virgin girls? Well, it's like in a dream, I'm this naughty, experienced girl trying to get these little virgin girls in bed. And right. Wow. Maybe that has to do with your young yeah. child or something like that. Um, no, 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 I'm not saying it's you want to your kid. I'm yeah. Just saying maybe, maybe those feelings have crept in. Like you have a young virgin, you have a girl. Yeah. Where do you get the feeling that you are so naughty? I don't know, it's just in the dream. Do you express those kinds of feelings when you're with your husband? Well, we don't really have sex. Okay, so... Uh, uh, wow. Um, it's going to take a while with the phone will allow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, Sarah, yeah. how old's so, your girl? Kinda... She's 15 months. 15 months, no sex with your husband? Uh, it's been about three months. You don't consider that somewhat abnormal? I mean, I don't know. My parents never really had sex. Well, how did you know? My parents never did work. I don't know. No, you tell them. No, you run out of it. You run out of it. I take a couple of sofa pillows and they side my head like a grilled cheese sandwich and run out of house. La, 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 Pick an old James Taylor song and sing it as loud as you can as you scream from the house. I'm even scared. I'm scared to ask any woman over 30 when she says, I have a little minor surgery. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, God bless you. I'm sending out something. I don't even know what it is. All right. So listen, Sarah. Uh, is it you out. that doesn't want to have sex or is it him? Oh, I don't. Why? You don't. I don't, I don't get off with the guy. All right. What happened to you? Oh, You're a lesbian. There we go. Anything? Something molested? Yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, yeah, she was. No, yeah. something before that. Yeah. He's like 100% oh, lesbian. Yeah, I don't think he just blew it off. No, nope, before that. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't enough. No, that, 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 that happens. They, they get raped as a teenager because of the victimization when they're between 5 and 8. I'm just <laughs> the show. I just know it's funny. You just blew it right <laughs> off. Nope. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Pardon? Alcoholic dad, abusive dad. Now, where did you get the dirty girls? Where, where did you learn that you were wicked? Right. I don't know. I guess everyone thinks of me as this sweet, innocent little girl. Yeah, well, where did, you, where did you start to think of yourself as wicked? Well, that's something you chose, by the way. That sweet little girl thing, you chose that because of something that, that happened. You chose to be that. What happened to me? All right, her phone is... So I'm going to go into a seizure. I'm going to have a seizure I, I, Okay, here, here's the thing. You need to have sex with your husband. I think the... I think... I mean, this is someone who was pregnant at a pretty young age, like 18 years old, uh, maybe younger. Uh, she probably looks at herself as a little naughty, and she probably looks at her young 15-month-old girl as sort of pure, and maybe there's some feelings of that. Plus, your dreams you spin stuff around sometimes. It doesn't necessarily yeah, I mean, no, translate that's into true. things that's true. in the real world, but there's issues going on. Like there's issues yeah. going on with you and your husband. On your kid's behalf, why don't you work that out so you're not one yeah, of those let's get that there. relationship working. I mean, she also said she didn't get, you know, her husband didn't get her off. So never, 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 with, she said never with men. Never with men. So right there, the little By the way, what, what, what am I having these about, dreams? How about, how about, about uh, a friend in kindergarten? A female friend in kindergarten. Molested her? Or, all right, but everyone does that. Sarah? Yeah? Did your female friend, when you were young, did you guys have a uh, sexual encounter? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Not that I remember, no. All right, mm -hmm. that goes down. But did you, did you, did you, well, I was with a girl before I was ever with a guy. How old were you? Fourteen. Is that when it started? Yeah. And we, we did you are you lesbian maybe? I don't yeah. know. I look at girls like when I'm walking around. Okay. Listen, no more lesbian. kids. <laughs> no more kids for a long time and 
figure out things with your husband. Make the marriage work, all right? Or, or not. No, he's got an alcoholic. It's going to work. I don't know why he's going to be on his medication. Yeah, he does it. Yeah, he does it. Why are you letting him hang out with your kid, too? You don't really get involved. I'm going to be having a baby. I'm not going to be having a baby. I'm not going to be having a baby. I'm not going to be having a baby. You're Freudian slipping slip it all over the place. I don't know how you're standing up right now. Come on. He he loves his child, but that doesn't make him a good father. He's a bi- if he's bipolar, he's not taking his medication. He doesn't act bad towards her, just towards me. I mean, we fire oh, off things. Believe me, your kid soaks that up. Yeah, of course. It'll be the implicit. You know, implicit he's mad at his child's breath. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, look, it's, it's like anything. It's like saying, well, we, we smoke, but we don't blow it into the kid's face. But yeah, the kid's sitting in the room and it's sucking it up, you know? The, the kid's sucking right. up whatever's in the room. I don't let the kid drink the Jack Daniels. Yeah, I just Jack get drunk. I just drink until I, I go to sleep and the kid sleeps on my chairs. I yeah, know. I'm trying to make out with him a little bit. And then I go to bed. <laughs> oh, this is great. You know, it's funny. I was, uh, I was uh, a friend of my wife's got a little surgery. And, and uh, as we were talking about this earlier, Please, everyone, understand that any woman over uh, over 33, when you hear, she doesn't she have an outpatient program, a small minor, a minor surgery, that means don't. That means it's in the bag. Don't talk. Yeah. Plus <laughs> not. Unless you're sexually enhancing <laughs> <it's like> something <laughs> that was actually, that actually wow. made the goods better. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then it's okay. It's going to be there. You don't have to talk about it. But What's don't have I, I don't know. That's my point. Here's my, here, my point is I have no idea what the procedure was. I don't ask. Because when I hear... Minor surgery, female over 33. I go right to how she goes. Go good, great. You don't find it. Oh, great, great. What do you want to eat? What do you eat? <laughs> so I don't know what to talk about, but it was really funny. So then later on in the day, I saw the girl. And it, again, it was the generic, are you doing good? Fine. Okay, okay. It's just fine. I still have no idea what she had done. That could have been brain surgery. I'm not asking. But it was so funny. I was just standing there. And uh, later on, another friend of mine came wandering into and into the uh, over my house, and, and, and I heard her talking. So, but it's like out of the corner of my ear, you know. I was like, oh, oh, you did? Whoa, what happened? What, what'd you get? And I, I started to look down and turn away. And it's like, oh, I was like, oh, crazy, what's that? Say? And I and I just I just realized that <laughs> yeah, there it is. See, he asked. He's oh. stupid. He made the mistake. He got it. It's right. Something something with the vagina. It's always Drew. Is it always something with the? It's it's the vagina. <laughs> oh. Oh. The pelvis until yeah. proven otherwise. Exactly. I, I can't even. We had when the baby was born. I, the doctor's like, "You want to see? Nope. Stand on this side. Nope. I will be my my I'm up against the backboard right now. I'm not looking down. Just tap the kid. Nope. I, I don't want to know. Chris, I, I've said the same thing to Drew many times. I think as guys, we may have outsmarted ourselves for a while. Oh yeah. When we decided we had to film and help and we'll breathe there. and do the whole thing. I think it was women, women asked us because you know, you know, they invented a class, push and breathe. Guess what? No one's too to do that. Push and breathe. No one's ever went, boom, 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 breathe. Oh, thank God you were here. That's never happened. I know. Why are we there? I, I mean, the women, thank you for bringing us in. I appreciate it. It's nice to be a member of the team. But oh. you know what? Oh, yeah. The old days, we were smoking cigars and we were drinking with our friends at the bar. My dad tells a great story of almost getting in a bar fight while I was being born. And you know what? That's a story I want. Yeah. Me too. I, I do not <laughs> want to be there. Yeah, you're, you're, just, you're just there to get a punching bag, by the way. Uh, yeah. Just I would tell you how you, you ruined her and you know, killed her for all because of you and your fault. She was my mom. My wife's so sweet. She's turned to me. She goes, I don't want to have a baby anymore. <laughs> and the doctor said, if you don't start pushing right now, I talked about this on, on the side show that uh, if you don't start pushing right now, I'm cutting off the epidural. And she went, <laughs> and the baby went out in one push. We were really? She was later for literally that. three days. Just went, baby, and there was clamps hanging down off her, uh, uh, oh, down there. See, but I don't, see, just clamp, and that, and the baby, and the doctor missed it, and the baby hooked one of the clamps and wouldn't let go of it. <laughs> just hanging there. The doctor's like, look at that. Yeah, it's not cervix de soleil. Pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that I, okay, that's my, that's my, here's my thing. Women want us to be a lot of places that we don't want to be. Weddings, uh, functions, mm-hmm. uh, birthing rooms. It, the fact that we really don't want to be there doesn't really factor in for them at all. As a matter of fact, it makes them want us to be, want us to be there even more. Yeah. Which, uh, us, as guys, we don't really have. If you find out that uh, your wife does not want to be somewhere, it's, it's, it's better that she not be there. You don't want to be there with someone who doesn't want to be there. And chivalry, see, it's the last bat of uh, yeah. chivalry. But I have You're here at this place that you would hate more than anything, and you pitched all the way to the front door. 
Now she's got to quit pitching in the joint. Oh, Christopher Titus is uh, here tonight. Christopher's uh, going to be down at the uh, Will Turn Theater this Saturday. We're well, doing a benefit. Uh, I, we invented, me and some friends invented a charity called the Insight Project. It's for kids at uh, 8 to 17 who have their adulthood insights. See how it means two things? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and Jay Leno. Here's the show. Jay Leno, Bill Maher. Right. Anthony Clark, John Lovitz, and myself. Julian Barbary is gonna gonna like, do a little intro at the beginning of the show, and at the Wiltern Theater, and uh, and we actually doing really well. We've only got so the, the the upper deck left, and the tickets are, are hauling, and it's it's gonna be a great show, and it's all going to Hathaway House, Hathaway's Children's Services, and they basically they these kids on average 22 foster homes on average, really, and the, and the school kind of takes them and raises them, and then puts them out in the world as neighbors instead of criminals, so. It's kind of L.A. helping L.A. So, yeah, wow, coming, down the road, coming down the road. And Leno, I mean, Leno and Marv are great about it. They're like, yeah, I'll do it. Jason, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll give you uh, more information about where you can get the tickets and all that uh, again this Saturday. Christopher Titus is here tonight. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Christopher Titus is our guest tonight. Christopher, uh, you remember from Titus? We keep our uh, fingers crossed for the uh, new drama. Like, uh, maybe coming on NBC? Yeah, NBC, man. That's why they actually wrote an action comedy for NBC also that they bought. Oh, that's and good. they dismissed. Uh, but we're still in the loop on that. Uh, he is here tonight plugging a uh, very worthwhile charity organization that he's involved with that's doing a benefit concert this Saturday at the Will Turn. Will Turn is a uh, great big old historic theater and it's, uh, it's easy to figure out where it is because it's got Wilshire and Western uh, right in the title. The uh, Will Turn Theater on the corner of Wilshire and Western. Sell out the moment. I, I just don't think that, you know, you, I, don't, aware. No one's, I don't think people got aware of it. I mean, no one's, I mean, when we get to see where, where Leno and Marr on the same stage, Ed Lovitz is doing comedy, um, Anthony Clark, we get him, you know, uh, and, then, uh, and then myself. And uh, this again, uh, Saturday night, this Saturday night, and if you want the information, you can call 818-461-9303 or go to Ticketmaster.com. I'll give that number out uh, later on in the show. Let's talk to Bobby, who's 15. Bobby? Hey. Hey. Uh, I got a question for Kurt for Titus. Okay, Bobby. Um, I saw, I was watching the Discovery Channel, I think, one day, and I saw you, uh, customizing a car. Uh, yeah, it's actually, I drove it down the, to, to the radio station, I think it was a nice open parking lot, and I thought monolith that's next to it, now I'm parked in a construction zone with it, yeah. Yeah, see, it's actually here. Yeah. Uh, I want to know, how much did that cost to get done? Uh, it almost cost me my marriage, just under that. <laughs> it cost me just under my marriage. Uh, is yeah. that a Chip Foops? Foops, yeah, Chip Foops, Foops. Yeah. yeah, Chip Foops did it. And uh, yeah, my wife and I, uh, when the bills the, the bills got to a certain point, where my wife basically said, uh, "Car or me?" Yeah, car or me. Yeah. And I had to I had to sell actually had to sell I'm selling my Viper because of it, so I can yeah, make gone. her happy. She's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's she's out. And what <laughs> what what is, what is the car? It started in 1956 Chevy uh, that I had since I was 18. Oh, it's true. you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we chopped it all up, uh, C5 uh, Corvette suspension all the way under the new Corvettes. Mm -hmm. uh, T56 transmission, Ramjet 350, all I mean, it's all customized. Everything been stretched, lengthened, opened, changed, uh, 69 Fairlane windshield. It's really, uh, when, you, when you start getting into that kind of fabrication, it's really a hard history. Yeah, it's old world, old world coach building. And, uh, and imagine, uh, imagine it starts to uh, starts to add up. Right? Especially when you had a TV show and like you're like just woohoo, yeah, here's some more money, and then it gets canceled and the car's halfway done. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't fun. Right. <laughs> that was a lot of people. Uh, I have a couple of cars too, and people get sort of angry about them sometimes. They go, "What are you doing with all these cars?" You know, I, I, I like cars. And are you gonna drive? Are you gonna drive them? Yeah, it's like. Not at once, a hole. Yeah. Where they're like, well, what do you do? I, it's like, listen, people have people have baseball cards and comic books and porcelain dolls and people collect things. You know, you happen to like cars. You yeah. up on the porcelain dolls. Would you sleep with them? Would you play with them? Yeah. Yeah. Did you play with them once? Did you do teams? Have a little Billy. Have you done some little Billy dolls? Dolls? Why you have dolls? Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do with that mint that Carl your side? You gonna play with it? Yeah. You gonna play with it? The ball that looks like cash. Come on, hit it around. Let's go. Use it well. Come on. It's a pepper. Come on, pussy. Baseball cards. You can put them in my 
folks, come on, use them. If we're not using them. Yeah, at least with a car, yeah, you'll go out and drive the thing. And you'll yeah. be the coolest guy there. Yeah, you can drive all around. What's your favorite piece of making a question? Look at me. Hey, I'm people of Drew's that way, actually. Although Drew oh, really, really? likes, <laughs> Drew doesn't like cars, but he likes to think of himself as a person who likes cars. Yeah. You say that's better? I'm like a Charlie, Charlie, like a Charlie. What's He's a black chopper. Never do that. Yeah, I mean, Drew, I've, I've known you for eight years now. Yeah. I've uh, spoken enthusiastically about but sports cars. You, you, you believe... I bought. You, 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 for yourself, you believe two cars. No, no. no one. Which one did you buy? The 540. Bought the 540, drove it for five or four or five years, sold that, then you leased the second car. This, the, the, these are not sports cars. These are not second cars. You had one car the whole time. Yeah, these are not Yeah. <laughs> well, they're so busy trying to figure out where to tie that orgasm that they're all up in their head and they get 
I mean, just pay for it, guys. I mean, they, could, they, they know where they're at. Uh, guys, guys get a little bit lost. All right, let's uh, talk to uh, Tasha, who's uh, 23. Tasha? Yes. What's up?
Hey everybody, it's Loveline, the man of parole, and that is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LB 191. Christopher Titus is in here tonight. Tomorrow night, uh, who's coming in, Drew? John McKinley. That's right. That is uh, from Scrubs. And yeah, that's very exciting. Drew's yeah. favorite show. It's my favorite show. Other than time. So, 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 so. It would be. with him and made but you know what never mind okay. but I, I love you i love your question you that like that he noticed it but she didn't yeah. but a big old scrape on it and she just laid there but i noticed it i want to ask if i can tell her <laughs> that's yeah. what i call her oh yeah <laughs> no that, that that was just a bragging call okay. uh shelly yeah you're 19 yeah what's um, that i've been smoking weed for about eight years now mm-hmm. like seven eight years and uh, now when i don't get stoned i have Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gets get depressed too, probably. Well, not really, no. Well, you will later. That comes later. And, oh. and you get stoned every day? Yeah, about four or five times at least. A day. What's your yeah. question? All right, what's your question? Well, I just wanted to know if I did like any permanent damage, like if I was to stop smoking when I stop paying Uh That's actually a hard question to answer. You probably will get better. You actually will get worse for about six months. 
uh, and be associated with a pretty good depression usually, and then that will all kind of settle down. There are people that have permanent panic attacks, but those are usually people that are smoking pot early in their sort of pot smoking career, they start getting panic. This, what you're manifesting is the usual situation of marijuana addiction, which is this drug that you love, it's always the stuff working, and it's hard when you stop it, it gets worse, you're getting depressed and irritable all the time, it's forgetful, you start smoking more pot to try to get the effects back, and it kind of makes all the symptoms worse. How do you get stoned four or five times a day? I have a lot of free time. You do. The, the biggest problem here junior is that... Junior college? Uh, yeah. Junior college, yeah. I know junior <laughs> college. The, the <laughs> biggest problem here, Shelly, is that you've been smoking pot since you were 11, and that yeah. what it does block is the usual brain growth and development of adolescence. And so you need to actually literally develop the emotional system that was supposed to be developing during that period of time. And that's hard to do when you're used to using pot as your way of regulating. You've got, you've got to find some way to be so able where? to... Somewhere, MA? Why? You know, you want to quit? She's, just, so she's not there yet. You I was going to say the bonfire. You know, yeah, there's, there's a couple of choices. You go to the, the counseling, you, you, you go see the pain that Drew talked about, or the, you go to a beach party with a bunch of buddies, get uh, really hammered, and walk around the bonfire trying to tell a story or sing an ACDC song, and fall into the bonfire. <laughs> and there you go. And but make sure someone's watching you so they yank you out before you, you inhale. Yeah, in, inhale and burn up. <laughs> and, uh, and, and in the hospital, the doctor's scraping the uh, dead skin from your hands. Uh, you'll have an epiphany, and uh, there you go. The depression will be over because you'll know you've killed yourself. All right. There you go. We're here to help. Trial by fire. <laughs> Check out that man in the meantime. All right, Shelly. Me, a lot of that. A lot of people like you with your story. Okay. you got to get a plan, too. Okay. This junior college not working. <laughs> All right? All right. All right. Christopher Titus in here tonight doing a uh, benefit for Will Turn Theater this Saturday. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Christopher Titus is in here tonight. Christopher is going to be. At the Will Turn Theater, doing stand up along with uh, his good buddy Jay Leno and Bill Maher. Oh, Jay Leno and Bill Maher get along. They get along okay? Don't seem like the same uh, no, same dude. Same guy. I don't know. No, I don't know. I, I don't know. There was, uh, you know, we, I went uh, did tonight show on Thursday and, uh, and I was talking to Jay about the benefit and he goes, Does that build a fun? He wants to close or what? I don't know point or something. No. I was like, yeah, It's just, it's just no matter level of fame it. you get to, it's still that. Well, who's going on that? You know, there's still like there's, right. there's an attitude about it. There's a problem with it. Yeah, I think so. I think I get along. I mean, if I get along with both of them, you know. Mm, no? Yeah. But uh, Jay's a, a true car guy. I'm sure uh, Chris would talk to him about it. Do you ever see him like in a club or do you only see him out tonight? Yeah. I have seen uh, Jay Leno um, not in a club. I actually saw him at the amphitheater. It was amp like that. Uh, Years ago, it was really funny. Yeah, he's a hard man. He's a way, you know, everyone says at the science show he's too soft. But man, when he's, in a, when he's in a live performance, he's got some really hard stuff. Yeah, he was, uh, I mean, this is this is a thousand years ago, but uh, I don't even know how I, somebody got me tickets or something, but uh, it was a really good show. So uh, you can uh, see him. And it's kind of it's kind of nice if you only know these guys from doing this sort of PG stuff uh, on the network television. You want well, to uh, see what ABC finally got? I mean, ABC, you know, the Bill is politically incorrect was kind of a, a blow, but man, the new show on, on HBO is really good. Have you seen it? Uh, yeah, yes, I have seen it. Pretty harsh. I mean, he's, getting, uh, he's, 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 he's actually better now. He's, he's so many, he's so great on the show. Yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, uh, yeah. Are the tickets more expensive to the thing? No, no, no. It's uh, 35 bucks a week. We only have $35, dollars dollars seats left. I mean, we sold all the, all the big money seats. And is it, is it? Do we have a couple? If you want to, it's another number you can call. If you want, like, a $2 or $50 seat right up front um, for the charity, it's, uh, you can call uh, 818-461-9333. And uh, we'll get you those. We only got a couple of those left, though. So. That's 818-461-9333. Yeah. And, uh, again, the uh, money is going uh, right to... Uh, Right, so let know. That's why I started my own charity with some with some friends of mine because I just I would go to the charities and you read the paper like forty five percent due to our due to our staffing and forty five percent like goes to charity and I was like no 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 we're gonna do one one event a year the inside project will do one event a year and you know between they between like eighty six yeah because we just paid for the theater eighty six and and, and ninety five percent of the money goes directly to the charity how much does it cost now what is that uh, pretty crazy twenty five hundred seat three thousand uh it's only like sixteen hundred seats oh sixteen hundred they, they remodeled it oh right right yeah, they pulled they pulled some stuff out of there i think but anyway they, 
it is, uh, how much does it cost to get a theater like that on it's, a Saturday it's, night? It's a nice little cheap piece of change, man, well, frankly. Well, well. And they gave us a little bit of a break, too. They gave you a break. They gave us a little break. It was like, uh, it's a pretty piece of change. Is it, uh, I, was, it? I was shocked, actually, when I, when I found out, because I've done theaters when I did show with these theaters, and I thought, we could do this, and then you hear what theater costs, like, you yeah. ah. Really? Is it is it ten grand? Is it fifteen grand? It's around there, yeah. Around there. But that's for a benefit too. That's for like, I mean, I guess it's like for if it's like a show that you get paid making money, that's like twenty three grand. Really? Yeah. And that's Saturday night price. Uh, I mean, yeah. They, yeah. there must be a Tuesday night price. If yeah, like, like, it's like, yeah, it's fifty bucks. Bring a check with you, and you get to rent the theater. Fox is yeah. free. This <laughs> 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 English letter calendar. <laughs> <laughs> run, 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 run. So and they're 85, but they're shot on. Bowser said it. All right. Eliminations, new. Uh, no, 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 no. Qualification, new eliminations, otherwise. Yeah. You remember all those commercials? I love those. I lived, up, uh, I lived one mile away from Fremont Drive Street, man. I lived those commercials. It was great because they would take the song uh, Fox on the Run by Sweet, and they would blare it in the background, and then the guy would just start screaming stuff. And you couldn't, he's like, sure, let's shut down, let's shut it down, the uh, squad. And he created some sort of thing where he goes, Big Daddy got it, it says that's a trophy. They said, sure, let's got another idea. Some go, some blow. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> that guy is got basically Is it? Oh, really? The real guy? It, what would you do? Just, I always thought it was like three guys, because it, it always, it, it, it always be like, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I always thought it would be great voice of the Terminator. It should have been that guy, instead of Arnold. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy was uh, awesome. And, and once in a while, like it's the commercials, these, these old that drag strip commercials, any kind of racing commercials they used to do, they would, once in a while, he would start telling you how an engine worked, like he'd go like, not a true let's say drop it on the ground, stop it, throw a match on the barely another, but put it inside a 500 cubic inch and it's black <laughs> with dynamite! And it's pure hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that's great. I love yeah. those guys. Mr. Gun Buzzers for the Warriors! Yeah, they, there's always, and then there's always an hang glider bomb. We'll do the halftime show. <laughs> like hang glider bomb and get on a motorcycle and jump 50 yards. Human pieces. stick of dynamite <laughs> flying inside a styrofoam cooler. Doesn't even a tra crash helmet is wet to blow himself up. <laughs> will he do it? We bet he will. Bring the kids. <laughs> and there, there's always some band you never heard of. So it's like Papa Do Run Run or some uh, some uh, Kiss. Uh, some kiss. Uh, it's always off, off man. It wasn't like the shun on us. It was like the shine on us. It was always just a little off. Like there was one letter missing, so it wasn't really the good guys. Especially erected stage in the infield. Shine on us yeah. and kiss are gonna be performing. Good computations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, English leather calendar girl. Tara. Hello. You're 21. Yeah. What's up? Um. All right. I have a question about menage a trois. I heard you talking about them earlier. Um, I had one about four years ago <coughs> with... The Texan! Oh, Texan. <laughs> two guys, and I really did not like it. And now I've been with a new guy for about two and a half years, and he's been talking more and more about a menage a trois with another girl. Why would you even consider it for something really different? Well, she did the two guys. Well, the, the, the thing is, um, I'm bisexual. I've had girlfriends before. Mm -hmm. So I myself would enjoy it, but I'm afraid. But your vagina. What? <laughs> now, now um, would he wait in yet? Are you, are you maybe have a, a moment of sanity here? Are you afraid of how you might feel about seeing your boyfriend with this girl? Exactly. There you and go. I'm afraid after two and a half years, mm -hmm. it would be something that would ruin our relationship. Mm -hmm. The answer is. Yes. 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 Not your twas. Yes. 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 This will be a monogamous relationship. Oh. Add one slutty transvestite chick. Look wherever there's dynamite! Next caller! Wait, why'd you find out what she does for living? Wait, why transvestite? It has something to do with <laughs> serving people either liquor, liquor or ass. Yeah. Tara? Yes? What do you do for a living? I'm a waiter. Uh, I mean, so there's some, there's some... Liquor or ass. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm school, so. I really it. nice guy. He's either a waitress. And what is uh, a bartender? A cocktail girl. He is a 
29 fighter wings. Was he, was he, 
Was he beef steak or, or beer can? You, you, know, you, you can do that maneuver that, that, that maneuver you packed it with the being able to maneuver the penis with the with the full I can't grip. do that. I know but this guy could do that. Um, yeah. And just not go deeper, not leave, leave the, hand. the hand there. Yeah, but it's hard it's hard to hold yourself up with uh yeah, more yeah. hand. Oh that's a rocky move. De- Desmond, you know, you're uh, you're twenty. Oh yeah, yeah. Um I you guys are great. I live with you guys all the time. Thanks. Alright, well, basically, this question is mainly directed for Drew, I guess I would say. Whatever. Um, Keep going. Keep Whatever going. he okay. says. I, they, you know, I'm with my girlfriend now, and I've been with her since last June. And um, when we first met, she told me that she was being molested by her uncle ever since she was, um, you know, from five years old ever since she was 13. So you killed and him with a tire. Now, like, it hurts our relationship because I don't trust her and she doesn't trust me because I think she's promiscuous or what I hear you guys saying like a girl or blood thing. Blah blah blah. Uh, not we not specifically. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't always translate into that. Yeah, okay. it can be good, good, yeah, the complete opposite it ways. Often it doesn't have to be just their girlfriend. Sometimes when people were molested, they get sort of hypersexual, they have a lot of partners, they get really into it, and then there's a kind of dormant shutdown, that's what I mean. Or they're, they're uh, not yet a butterfly. Or, or, or like a cocoon. Yes. But, but they could still be trustworthy, but just have a lot of chaos. They have little energy. Like, we find like, every week, dude, and, um, I go like, she doesn't trust me at all. Like, I go to the room, she asks me how you do over there, whatever. And I'll be like, yeah. And then she's like, well, you flirted with her, you flirted with her. Well, oh, like, here's the thing is she getting any help? Oh, she was. She just lost this number. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because her. Yeah, her. Well, I don't think I'm going to have a car. This, you know, like, you can hear yourself a nice, uh, hippies chatting if, uh, you have a few bucks in the bank or a good job and if you go to the office, you're probably a weekend thing. It's not a run on the time, it's funny, you gotta, you gotta first get better to be able to watch. But, hippies jag is not like a good first car when you're a cop. And that's essentially what happens to these guys. People can work victims of the case. They're 23. If you can react out of that, you might have a chance. If not, 
Seriously, Max, yeah. you gotta move on. <laughs> you gotta move on. Get the Japanese car. They don't talk bad. Hopefully the tires were bound when they were young because they're smaller. <laughs> smaller, like 45. Simply in your soul. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, he got a, he got a groan of pain from the doctor on that one. Uh, I had a question for Chris. Mm-hmm. Um, I was uh, wondering how you uh, like got your start in Hollywood because I'm interested in getting into like the arts and stuff. Into the arts? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. I worked in comedy clubs where drunk guys threw stuff at me for. Well, I was into you guys in art piece. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, the arts. I, 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 even someone calling it the arts makes me laugh. Um, well, how, did you, how did you get started? Uh, I, I, I had no other skills. I fell into the bonfire the year before. I had no other skills. Wanted to be a comic since I was five, but I had a dad going, what, are you kidding me? No way. No way in hell. You're not talented. You're a schmuck. Whatever. Right. And uh, and so finally, I fell in the bonfire, and then when the doctor said I would have died, I said, well, I'm going to be a comic. Whether I suck at it or not, I'm going to try. Right. And I went up on stage, man, and I just, you know... I gotta tell you, man. Here's, here's what you gotta know. Hollywood is, is this big... There's 55 concentric walls. And right now, I'm maybe four walls in. Uh, Adam's, Adam's, Adam's about five walls. Man, four, they got two shows, five, five walls in, maybe. Yeah. But, right. but Brad Pitt, and actually Nicholson is in the center. Nicholson and Harrison Ford. And right. then there's like, and then Brad Pitt's like, Brad Pitt's not even in the center. Yet. He's like two walls out of the center. Right. And you know what, man? You just gotta keep banging your head. And the outside wall is a really ugly wall. Oh, this guy's like, it's just made out of, it's like Spikes an old, like, and Irish wall that no one has worked on. The center wall is just flat. Gu- guarded by a bunch of huns. Guarded by a bunch of huns. It's ugly, and you gotta keep banging your head against the wall, man. All you gotta do is what you're gonna do. If you wanna be a comic, be a comic, be a musician, pick up a guitar. But all these people that whine about, how am I gonna be fair? You know, I don't know. It's really hard. You know, if you're not banging your head, how can you get to wall? And the people that don't make it are the people that stop, stop banging their head against the wall. Right. And you just gotta keep banging your head against the wall. Hey, you know, I think that I'm doing this my life, doesn't it? <laughs> Here's the other thing too is it doesn't have to be a miserable experience. Well, you can't. You just you can't give up. Well, I think if you if you want to do comedy or you want to act or you want to play music, if that's your love, if that's what you're able to do, the arts has to be like that. You're enjoying your life, right? But if you if you decide that you need to be famous, you're enjoying your life. And you go about that any way you can, anything short of that goal, you're going to be miserable, then you probably will be miserable. Yeah. I mean, you did comedy. You know, and I tried to be famous for a long time. For 10 years, I tried, like, did it comedy. Hey, everyone else, when you go on the airplane, the blinkers on. I mean, right. I did really crap, and then I got really clear that the only way that, that once, once whatever you want, the arts, once you cross the lines of the arts, where you're actually, like, Norman Rockwell's bleeding the play, it was about people being from screwed up families. You know, it was about getting them to know how much stronger they were. Once you unlock that, you're actually trying to make a difference. Whether how everyone says that, whatever that means, at that point you're actually in the arts, and at that point that's where everything will happen. But if you just want to be a comic and learn three chords and or be a musician, it's just if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, it's not going to work. Yeah, hey, Adam. Adam is in the arts. Yeah, that's look at me. I make jack off jokes. So <laughs> about the garbage. But but it is an interesting point he makes that the people that kind of stick around are doing it because. You call it doing something good and pointing it out. Mm-hmm. You're calling it making a difference, but it's the same thing. Wait a minute. I think, I think people stick around and continue to work in media do it because they need to, they need to make a difference. Yeah, well, it's worthwhile. So when you do a crappy, you start going to tumor on your soul. That's what I call it. I was going to open a body shop. Ten years in county, it's like, this sucks. I hate it. I don't want to do these crap jokes anymore. And I was going to open a body shop. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When you talk about doing something good, I just have the same thing as making a difference. Yeah. Well, I, blah, 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 blah. That's right. You know, I know Adam's masturbation jokes is a lot more eloquent than last time. Like, Thanks, Dan. Yeah. That was hard. <laughs> well, not as hard. They, they've got a lot, a lot of more, uh, just, je ne sais quoi. So far tonight, it's because I've made them all for me. <laughs> well, that's what the ladies like. They like giving me oral. <laughs> there, but there's also a couple things that need to be said, which is, not everyone is, is good. There are people that are bad. And if you're bad, if you're a bad musician, if you're a bad computer programmer, if you're a bad comic, you're a bad actor, you might not work that much. Yes. And, it, and you don't deserve to, to make a living if you're not good at doing something. Well, that would be the case, though, for being able to accept reality. Yeah, yeah. and it's like every, every kid grows up wanting to play. I wanted to play football. Everybody wants, you know, wants to be an astronaut, wants to be a professional baseball player. But at a certain point, your skill, you realize that you do not possess the skill to play at that level. I can't race motocross. Reality 
steps in and he must earn, earn a living. Sometimes in show business, I think people get so fixated on somebody keeping them down or to your no, who you know that they never confront that reality of, hey, maybe they're just not good enough from a skill level to do it. But no one faces that in a relationship or anything. Mm. You don't just go, you know what? I got to accept that I suck. You just, no one ever faces that. It would be nice. It would be look, nice. I mean, look at me. <laughs> just keep going. Just keep playing. I don't come to terms. <laughs> Well, well, I'll screw, start a fire on the whole thing. <laughs> well, I'll yeah, I'll start coming out. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line of Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Christopher Titus is our guest tonight. He's going to be down at the uh, Will Turn Theater, and that is uh, coming up. Uh, on this Saturday, he's going to be there with uh, Jay Leno, Bill Maher, John Lovitz, and uh, other comedians. And this is Clark. A, Anthony Clark. This is a. This is a. I don't know when you're going to get guys this big together under one roof uh, again, ever again. So go down to the Will Turn, and it's for a real good cause. The uh, money is going to uh, Chris's charity, Pathway House, which uh, does what again? They're basically taking kids uh, eight to seventeen. These kids, like, you, like if you're four years old and you got cancer. It is money thrown at you. They're throwing money at you. Yeah. But if you're 14 and all you have is an attitude because your parents were dicks, right? Um, you're pretty much screwed. So these are like these kids would end up throwaway kids, which would be homeless kids breaking into your house without half the house raising them till they're eight, 17 years. And Chris was the plans to have a new a whole new department there, the bonfire therapy. <laughs> yeah, bonfire therapy. I'm starting that. I'm starting that. It's very cheap. Well, not all the money from the charity will be going towards the bonfire. We're actually going to build them a dental wing, burn center, and a bonfire therapy wing. <laughs> well, I, I think Chris is uh, saying what uh, we've known from doing this show for quite some time, which is this is a, uh, you, you, you invest a few pennies and it's, it's really pennies on the dollar. I mean, when you talk about welfare and having multiple kids out of uh, wedlock and prisons and judges and court appointed this and that, I mean, these guys at 14, 15 may not be costing us too much just yet. But uh, believe me, they're going to have an entire adulthood of uh, substance abuse, taking up beds in county hospitals, uh, crime. It, it just Cruising through your neighborhood, going, you know what? I wasn't raised by the hate my mom and dad. No one helped me, and you know right. what? I want to break into that guy's house. Right. Maybe a home invasion robbery. But we can avoid all that at the Wiltern Saturday night. That's right. And and all <laughs> also uh, these these guys. I mean, just. The cost of society that these people, the, 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 <sighs> none of them are going to pay taxes because they're going to be in and out of prison or working uh, under the table, possibly employed by me working on one of my Well, because of Hathaway House, these people Possibly employed by me working on one of my houses. Society. And neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, one, one of the... <laughs> Throwing out there, there that. That's what he's... You could go darker spin and darker spin. <laughs> You know, we, we, we do know that if you can give to these people uh, early on, you can make a difference. And I don't know why the government is not so interested in this. It doesn't seem to be a concern of theirs. And I'm, I'm guessing because it doesn't really win you any elections to say you love teenagers. It's more children are our future. And we got to get our social security. Yeah, we have a good leader that put it clearly. Look, if you put it clearly, look, let's put it to people that, that, that rich people. If these kids don't get help, they're going to be... They're going to be raping your daughters, breaking into your house, and they're these, and half right. um, helping these kids turn these kids into neighbors, and they could do on average right. twenty-two far or, or or worse, getting uh, becoming publicists. There you go. Uh, that's some, I mean it's unthinkable, but it could happen to some of these kids. <laughs> no, I, I here's what I want. I want I want a politician to come out and go listen. I hate teenagers as much as you do. I got two at home. I'd like to kill them right now. But let's face it, we got to sink a couple bucks into these kids, straighten them out, get them on some birth control, get them educated, get them some job skills, or it's going to bite us in the ass. And they've, they've actually studied what it is that uh, turns kids around from at-risk environments. And the, the one thing that this one very large-scale study found was a single positive, sustained relationship with an adult outside the home. And comedy, comedy, comedy. At the Wilter, Saturday night. Be there, some go, some blow. Little Billy Mars gonna be there. Jenny Lovitz is gonna be there. Yeah, the Mongoose Mar. <laughs> Shirley Cha Cha Mano, the Texan gonna be here. Mark Anthony Clark. TV Tommy Ivo. <laughs> Big Daddy. <laughs> so you mean this relationship with like, just an adult that hangs out that they know it's gonna be there for him? Apparently, that has a major, major protective role. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a really, you know, insightful. They do a study on this. 
You mean if there's someone older and smarter around them who can help them lead their lives well, better, here's that what, would help them. They actually, actually, <laughs> yeah, no, actually went backwards. They went into these homes and they went, they took these horrible homes. They went, oh my God, half of these kids turn out okay. How could that be? But then they started looking at them, what do they have in common? And this is what they all had in common. Yeah, they were Willie the Hobo at the train tracks, helped that one kid. They've actually, his life all the time. They've actually, <laughs> <laughs> they actually, they actually started to, to dial it back a little further. And what they're finding is a guy up in the Northern Plains at University up there is finding that secure attachments in childhood, they get six months a year of secure attachment to mom, that protects them. And then they seek a secure attachment in the outside environment. Um, that tends to be what it was. So my kid's fine. We got we had 19 months. I could all help break those laws. There we go. They can still, they can have problems, but it's protective. It protects them. Oh, that's cool. Amy. Amy. Call her. Who goes by Amy from Arizona? Amy. Hey. Who's that? Well, wasn't sleeping. Uh, Rob. Yeah. We're only gonna hold for 12 minutes. 35. Yep. What's up? Well, um. I was going to ask Christopher, I'm a uh, incurable motorhead myself, um, what do you think about slower chest keep right, uh, keep right laws and the fact that they don't enforce them? What, what, say, what, what kind of keep right what laws? Slower traffic, oh. keep right, and yeah. why they're not enforced the laws. Wow, that is the silliest but cool question that I could, uh, <laughs> I think I think you should move to Germany if it pisses you off. Yeah, but well, wait a minute, I like why slower traffic here. Keep right. Yeah. No, no I, no, I like it, but I mean, I'm just saying that what do we do, shoot them? In Germany, if you if, if someone rear ends you in the fast lane, it's your fault. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying, move to yeah. Germany. Uh, you know, do you think, oh, do, 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 uh, I'm gonna, I think I should lead the revolt, is what I think. <laughs> well, I figure, you know, um, Drew and, uh, you know, you guys are always saying you've got the stupidest callers, so I figure you're the audience that should hear this. Yeah, well, here's here's my plan for. Uh, I'm working. I'm working on an equation to figure out what speed is uh, safe for you to travel on the freeway. Okay. A couple, I got a couple ideas. All right. First off, you know, if the speed limit is 65 and uh, there's hail coming down mm -hmm. and torrential rains, and you're going 65, a cop can pull you over and say you're traveling at an unsafe speed. It may not be faster than the posted speed limit, but you know the road's covered with ice and you're going 65. Valid. Valid. What about when there's nobody in the road, the sun's at uh, high noon, and you're driving a car that's capable of going 170 miles an hour, and you're going 90 miles an hour, and again, it's safe to travel at that speed. Shouldn't they use the same logic when it's above the speed limit? I agree, 100%. Here's my plan. Like, I think it should be at 150, then you got a 20 mile bumper in case you need to pass anybody who's also doing 170. You have a speed rating on your time, you know? There's uh, uh, different speed ratings on a tire. Right. If you have a tire that's a speed rated, to, let's say 170 miles an hour, we deduct your age from the speed rating. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, if you're a 75 year old guy and you got some cheap tires that are just speed rated like 110 miles an hour, you can only go like 22 miles an hour. That is your top speed. But if you're like a 14 year old who's got a bat with some good gears, some gator bats on <laughs> the it. The includes the. We need to retire the age and the horsepower of the engine. No! The age of the car. No. So you shut up. No. You shut up. There's no formula. You shut up. There's no formula. What? The horsepower? Age of the car? I'm sorry about all the car stuff, Dave. I'm sorry. Just slide down over there. Next time I'm driving up in like a, just a Tercel. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm 38 years old. I got I got speed rated tires 170 miles an hour. That means uh, my top speed is uh, 132. You see what I'm saying? I we, we deduct my age from the speed rating on the time. No, no, I, no, I had a Viper on, on, on 99 at 2 in the morning. I was doing, I, I actually I got in a race with a vet, and I was going, the Viper's capable of 186. Right. Uh, at one point in the middle of the night, I was doing 160. Right. So, now, so I was actually, I was actually 12 miles over my uh, speed. Uh, well, so you could be cited. I, I could be cited for 12 over. At so if, if you found a cop that was ticky tack enough, because it was getting really easy, yeah. they could ride you. Is that a hard on for me? Oh, that guy's going over. Okay, all right, right. right. So, okay, so I'll keep it down. Right, you gotta keep it down. I got 148. There she go. 148 is my soft speed. Thank you, Adam. This is another platform we're gonna run on. Besides <laughs> punishing teens, Leanne. Yes. Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Hi, how you doing? Good. Okay, I'm a little nervous right now. Um, well, my question is, I'm taking the abortion pill. Uh, I just took it a couple days ago, and they told me to avoid taking alcohol, Advil, and weed because it will make your blood thinner. You're taking the RU46 pill? Yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck. Abortion pill. All right. Yeah. 
Where did you get it? Uh, at the clinic. Alright. Yeah, the weed's probably not as big a deal. That's what you're worried about. Not that big a deal. Okay, so it's not gonna leave me to the hospital. Well, I wouldn't think so. It's not, not the way aspirin or something like that could from the bleeding. When you're bored, you can bleed quite a bit. The bleeding becomes sort of uncontrolled. It uh, it could freak you out though if you're high and you thought I basically uh, ate some Roundup for my baby. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be harsh. Oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna harsh your mouth, but I could be kind of freaky. Harsh your mouth. <laughs> That's what the kids say. Ate some Roundup. Mouth. Oh, you know, like this. I, I get what it means. I know what it is. Why? Can so you're fucking sick, Adam. Yeah. You're sick, fucking puzzle. Okay, but, yeah. Look at that. How old are you, bud? How old? Nineteen. Nineteen. How long? What? How long does it take to um for the egg to actually come out? Because I haven't really had any real severe cramping or anything yet. Uh, I don't know if you always expel it. It's not an egg. It's a Fertilize the fetus. Okay. Yeah. Oh, true. Again, yeah. the, harsh in the mouth. Yeah. Now who's harsh in the mouth? I'm harsh in it. How? How? I'm how harsh in it. <laughs> uh, about nine weeks. About nine weeks. All right. Yeah. All right. True. Don't say it on it. Right. At nine weeks, you would expel something. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, good times. You know. Okay. All right. There you go. That's all right. It really bothers me when they when they roll with the good times. For some reason, that one gets to me. We had a 14 year old niece of my wife's is pregnant, and on her family, and they so not just not just your family's pregnant. Ah, you know, I married a dude. My wife's great. I just married in this family. It's good, and and she's 14, and you know, I talk to the mom, calls the house, hey, how you doing? I'm hey, I'm going to school. I'm gonna be a paralegal, and I go out and I was a kid, and they say, oh, you know, she's pregnant. Yeah, she's 14. And, 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 and we, had, we had like a big talk about it. She's like, what do we have to do? I guess in California, if you are of if 13, they said if, if you're 13 years old, don't, I don't understand that, that you can be a parent of a 14 year old pregnant and you don't have any say that that can stay or go to jack roll. Well, <laughs> <that's> excuse <something. laughs> me. No, look, that what is a Billy Jack. I don't know. What do you mean? Yeah, do you remember that film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it was hanging out with a real young girl or something. Was that Billy Jagger? You talking about the movie Billy yeah. Jagger? Yeah. Well, you know, he was protecting the school of sort of misfits up on the hill. You know, <laughs> Indians trying to do their thing. That was all, like, man, that was all the Billy Jack movies. Sheriff kind of looked like you. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> all right, but, 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 yeah. So what, what Christopher's asking is, is if your child is, is, is a minor, is under 18, you can't force them to have an You can't. Not if they're over 13 or I think it's over 14. All right, but all I know is that it seems, it seems so wrong. Yeah. Just you, you let this kid. You, know, uh, you, you better uh, you better get this new uh, future tense series yeah, on yeah, yeah. because you got another. But this is the same thing. kid. This is the same kid that set a firehouse on fire when she was like nine. Firehouse? She set a firehouse on fire, which I, I think she she's pretty smart. She gets irony. Which I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I thought that was pretty good. Cool. That's pretty smart. That's that's almost funny. All right, uh, you're going to be paying up later. We'll talk during the break. So I, got, I, got, I got more people on my payroll now, too, I married into. Uh, First luck, you know, I, uh, I talk a little smack about his wife, but his wife's dad owns a hardware store. It's no good to Drew because Drew's pure puss, but having a dad who owns a, a hardware store is pretty cool. I mean, a father-in-law yeah, is, cool. is a pretty cool thing. Right? Did you hook you up with a discount? Drew, I thought you were high. No, because uh, you know Adams. The I would have to over and build my daughter's free house the way he promised two years. Take ago. a picture of the site. I'll I'll show it to my folks. Of the site. Of the site. I'm gonna have it surveyed. I'm gonna <laughs> shoot some elevations. This Buy weekend. some stakes and some of that red ribbon. Put that around, and Adam will be over. Yeah, there. the big guy at the transit is wearing a reflective vest. He'll be there about six a.m. on Sunday. Basically, gonna take a six foot trench around the tree and then leave it there for four weeks. It's <laughs> gonna happen. Get ready. Titus is here. Christopher Titus is. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, your buddy Plumline, I'm Adam, that's Drew. Christopher Titus is in here tonight. He's going to be doing stand-up this Saturday along with uh, Jay Leno, Bill Maher, and John Lovitz, and uh, Anthony Clark, and it's uh, going to be uh, all for uh, the Hathaway Children's uh, Family Services, which is uh, Christopher's um, charity, and it's going on uh, this Saturday at the Will Turn Theater. Oh, uh, Hey, what? Go to Ticketmaster.com. Do you want to go? With any information about this? Do I? Well, it's it's a uh, it's a benefit. So you got to pay for it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I think I could do this. You can introduce, uh, introduce more. Is this, uh, this Saturday? 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 What's that? Yeah, no, yeah, they are. No divorce? 
Nobody cheated on anybody? No. Alcohol is in the phone? Mm -hmm. Good. Well, then you should be healthier than you are. Yeah, exactly. Well, your, your esteem is so low that you allow somebody to give you your life. You call not the way you really need something. There you go. Yeah. You're, you're fine. Just yeah, you're fine. Just stop the guy with your your call got in the way of somebody that really needs help. Oh, it's so classic. There is a strength that you gain when you do the right thing. When uh, you're walking down the street, you see a guy's wallet pop out of his back pocket, you pick it up. For a moment, you think, I got some money here. You count the money anyway. You count the money. And then you chase the guy down and give him his wallet. It feels, it feels, yeah, it makes you stronger. When you dump someone, you need to dump because uh, they deserve it and you and you have your pride and dignity. dignity. It makes you a better person. It makes you a stronger person. You need to build on that. It's good for you. No, don't be moments. Don't be moments you really care about. After you, because when you say, we're done, you walk away feeling strong. And then the next day, you'll be curled up in your bed on a field right. position, screaming like a monkey that's been stabbed. But Overall, that will go away, strong, and you'll be strong again. Yeah, live it. Right. Live Hi, I am studying to be an opera singer, and I'd like to start taking birth control, but I have some concerns because I've heard that the higher um, hormone versions of the birth control can cause problems with the vocal cords, drying them out, Ooh. and basically making it harder to sing. Um, I have a very interesting question. And now that it can change the sort of thickness of your cord, it can change your upper register, and the uh, progesterone has some angiac features in it. It's, it's, a, it's a very significant question. Wow, it's a very, very interesting question. You wouldn't notice it in someone's speaking voice, but when you're really trying to, to work the voice the way you do, you know, sing along with. It was only a matter of time. I'm kind of, kind of surprised it took them so long.
Yo, thank you. You. General the food is
Thank you. a smaller fleet that would have been a devastating strike if it just did. Against our fleet it buys them a couple of dead ships. Oh I did you think you were gonna get my carrier? <laughs> Oh, my God. 
These are battle carriers, do you understand? Amazon fails for the first time in 2020. I think. I'm going to check. Alpha Core. Yeah, that's Thank you. 
lost my fucking blood.
brief break.